club, right? All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. Good morning, good morning. I hope all is well. I am David Shans. I am your podcast entrepreneurship coach. Um, let me know where y'all tuning in from every single Friday. We're here at noon around lunchtime. Hopefully y'all are like leaving work. You're leaving work on your break. And you're like, yo, I need this, I need this information. I need this information. So uh just doing a little bit of work over here. But good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know where you are. Drop the link. Cleveland. Drop what link? Good morning, brother from NC. Okay. Hey, do me a favor, y'all. Share this out with a couple of friends. Tell them it's going down. You know, today's conversation. Is about fear. Okay, we got Philly in the building. We got Cleveland in the building. We got North Carolina, North Cackalack in the building. Um, where y'all at? Where y'all at? San Antonio, Philly, Texarkana, Texas. Love it. Orlando, Stone Mountain. Okay, CJ, thought you asked. SMs, Nashville, tapping in. Nolens. Nolens. Spell it right, man. Spell it right. It's Nolens, Nashville, Clarksville. All right, let's get busy, man. Listen, I don't got a whole lot of conversation for you all. There's some things that you're afraid of, and I don't like it. I don't like it. Somebody throw it in the chat real quick. What is one thing that you're afraid of? Name something that you're afraid of. When it comes to life, business, success, what is one thing you're afraid of? Share that with me. Somebody throw it in the chat. What are you afraid of? Failure. Okay. I mean, that's a good answer. I think a lot of people are. Well, claim they're afraid of failure. I'm not 100% sure. Um, after this conversation, you'll say, well, I am I really afraid of failure? Not being good enough. Quitting my job. Woo-wee. Losing the success I attain. Listen, Brianna Murphy. You talking good right now. Losing the success I have. Listen, man, do y'all realize it's okay, let me let me ask let me ask this question. Would you rather would you rather love and loss than to not have love at all? That's how it goes, Tabo. Is that the word how you say that? Is it better to have Loved and lost than to never have loved at all. Is that how you say it? You never, it's all good? No, that's not it. All right. Um, okay. Let me just ask a question, plain and simple. Would you rather have become super successful and then fall from grace? Than to never have been successful and just keep climbing. What are your thoughts? Give me an answer. Would you rather have been successful and fall from grace or never have been successful in the first place? Not being able to handle the success, aka being overwhelmed. What do y'all think? Somebody talk to me. Uh, why does he talk slow? Get to the point. Dang, Glover. Golly. Well, I highlight that comment. I mean, I said, why does he talk slow? I'm trying to get my words together. I'm trying. Dang, Glover. Dang, I'm about, listen, actually, Glover, you should come on this live real quick. Hey, Glover, would you come on the live if I sent you a link? Um, I'd love to talk to you. Why does he talk so slow? Golly. Is it better to have love and lost than to not have loved at all? That's what I said, I think. Um... You'd rather fall from grace. Rather fall from grace. I'd rather be successful and learn from others to stay successful. I'd rather be successful because I can do it once, I can do it twice. Okay, good answer. Hey, listen to me. But if you ever talk to somebody 
who's been successful, one of the biggest anxieties in life is to have it and to lose it. Because the anxiety of what other people think about falling off. Anybody in the chat, you ever fell off? You ever been that dude, that girl, ever? Hey, it sucks. I remember, I remember, I was in a company called Prepaid Legal. It's now called Legal Shield, but uh, my like my first official business, and I made some money. I reached executive director. That was the top of the company, executive director. And I think I was 18. I was the youngest executive director in the state of Georgia. I was making money, Liddy. So I'm making all these sales, and the way it works is if someone signs up for a membership, the company paid you. I don't know if it's like that anymore, but they, the company paid you up front. So you get these big commissions. Well, the challenge was if the person only, let's say, for instance, for instance, let's say they pay me $100 saying that this person is going to stay for a year. Well, if they cancel their membership six months into it, they charge back the other 50. They gave you 100, but if they don't stay for a year, they charge back the other 50. Now, I wasn't all that good at retaining customers. I was good at making the sale. I wasn't really good at making the sale, but I was good at getting people to sign up. So the challenge was I sold it, but a lot of chargebacks started to hit. And if I have, let's say, $200 in chargebacks, and I make another sale that they're going to give me $100? Well, when I make that sale, they don't give me the 100 They take 100 off of the already $200 charge back. Now, I still owe 100 meaning I have to go make another sale. Long story short. Well, the chargeback started to pile up. And no matter how many sales I made, it was just really, really difficult for me to make any money. So I had to go get a job in the state of Georgia. Well, there was a lot of meetings going on in Georgia and people knew my name, but I had to go get a job. And I was reluctant to go get that job because I knew that someone was going to say, hold on, bro. You the dude that used to wear the, 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 the suits and was in the front of the room talking about you made all this money. And then the people that I recruited, I'm telling them, yo, you could be just like me. You can be executive director. And the anxiety of having to go get a job tore me up. It was pride. And I said to myself, yo, I really, psh, I would I'd rather not have ever won than to like win and then people see me lose. Anyway, today we're talking about fear. And I think we need to start to analyze what we're afraid of. But let's play this intro, then we're going to get into it. Hey, make sure I share this out. There are a bunch of people on this YouTube live. And um, uh, we need to get those numbers up. And just hit that like. Hit that like. It's right now 82 people on YouTube. It's going to be so wonderful, Tybo, when there's like 8,200 because y'all get to remember when it was 82 people. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so let's play this intro, man, by my brother J Star. He's not here right now. He's on vacation, but we still want to hear this song. Let's get it, Zell. Look, I ain't got time for this small talk. Your big plans coming up short. I call it how I see it. Don't get mad at me. In a room full of winners is why I'd rather be. Every new level you reach come with jealousy. You gotta watch the way you move, we call it strategy. Official with the game, curry with the three. If you need some social proof, you know we got receipts. But don't you never let them doubters win. Watch your back, your biggest foes can be your closest friends. They say the enemy is just your enemy. Quit trying to do life by yourself, you need community. Need somebody with wealth that did it by themselves. Why you stressing about them people who deny your health? And keep on making moves with no apologies. But if they want smoke, we get that for free. Yeah. We get that for free. Yeah. Yeah. 
Shouts out to my brother J Star on the song. Let's get into this. Uh, J Star and Nella, first off, last week they got engaged, and today they're in uh, Orlando. So uh, they will be back next week. But let's jump into this conversation. What are you so afraid of? What are you so afraid of? Let me get that beat, Zell. I gotta talk. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta talk my talk over this beat, y'all. Okay, turn me up a little bit. Turn me up a little bit. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Free Smoke. This is my monologue. I do a monologue every single show to kind of set the tone for the show. Now, I am going to ask you all to call in live on my YouTube channel because I want to hear from you all. But if you don't call in, you could just listen and enjoy and have the conversation. But I want to see you in the chat. This is going to be an engaging conversation between you and I. This is not me just talking at you. This isn't just one of those lives where I just start to talk and you take notes and all that kind of stuff. I really, really want to see you. So if you are going to call in, let me know. Okay, let's get it. Here we go. What are you so afraid of? Have you ever thought about the things that you're afraid of? Yes, no. What are you, have you ever like really, really thought about the things that you're afraid of? So some people say, yo, I'm afraid of failure. Well, have you sat down and really thought through what you're truly afraid of? And how often? This is important. This is really, really important to like start to think of the stuff that you're afraid of. Think real quick, then you're gonna come up with some stuff that you're afraid of, and then I want you to tell me, like, have you really given it much thought? Because by the end of this conversation, I'm thinking that you're not really afraid of the thing that you're, you're thinking of. So somebody just said, I am afraid of my own potential. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. But I think it deserves some attention. It really deserves some attention. Think about it. The, th the answer that you're coming up with that you're afraid of, I want you to really think about this thing. Why are you afraid of that? Why? Here's the thing. Fear isn't real. And typically, the things that we're so afraid of hasn't happened yet. If you really think about it. Are you, so are you afraid of snakes? No? What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of, Zell? What are you afraid of? Nothing? You're not afraid of anything? I don't believe that. You're afraid of heights? Have you been up on heights before? And what happened? Sometimes you get anxious. Sometimes you get scared of the height. But what are you afraid of? You're afraid of falling off you're afraid of dying but guess what you haven't died so i'm afraid of something that hasn't happened yet i don't fool with snakes i'm afraid of snakes but the crazy thing is i've never been bit by one or like strangled by a snake but i'm just afraid of it like the, the things that we are afraid of typically typically i'm not saying in all cases but typically it hasn't happened yet or it's happened but the idea in your mind of what it looks like when this thing that you're afraid of actually happens typically is more of more uh, larger than life in your mind than it is in actual life so this is one of my favorite stories to tell when we start talking about fear I was watching this documentary of Steven Spielberg and they started talking about the movie Jaws. Well, the movie Jaws um, is about a big shark that's like terrorizing the city and they're eating people and stuff like that. I don't think I've ever seen Jaws, but you get the point. It was one of the scariest movies out back then. So what they had was they had this like, uh, they had a mechanical shark, right? Underwater, you'll see the shark come out like, you see the little shark. And then people are like, oh my gosh, it's a shark. And they're afraid. The viewer sees the shark, it's like, yo, that's a huge shark. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine 
being on a low boat with this type of massive animal that I see on, on the screen. This is huge. So what they said was that like uh, during recording, the mechanical shark stopped working. It broke somehow. Well, the mechanical shark, because it broke, they was like, yo, we still got to produce it. We just can't fix it. Something's going on. We can't fix it. It's not going to look right. So somebody had this genius idea that these big crates, these like, you know, those, those crates. Like if you ever seen a movie where the crates are like floating on the water and you get what I'm saying. So they had like this motor under the water that they would tie to the crates. And they play this music like do 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 but you don't see the shark you only see the crates moving however the crates floating on the water was an indication of the shark what they found was not showing the shark was scarier than when people actually see the shark you get what I'm saying? You don't see the shark, but you know that because these crates are like bobbing, eventually, I guess the shark got a hold of these crates and you see the, the crates floating on the water and you're like, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo. and it's like, yo, oh my gosh, I'm so afraid because I can't see what's about to attack me. And they said that was more scary than actually seeing it. The anxiety around the thing that hasn't happened in your life yet is so terrifying it's terrifying but it actually hasn't happened okay fear and faith have the same exact definition fear and faith have the same definition y'all can just sit here till till we start fear and faith have the same definition fear is the belief that what hasn't happened will happen. So, the thing that you're so afraid of, it hasn't happened yet. Yo, so people are afraid of tripping at the graduation or you're afraid of uh, speaking. And you're like, yo, if I speak in front of this crowd, I'm gonna start stumbling and bumbling over my words and they're gonna like boo me and I'll never be able to speak in this town again. Well, fear is the belief that what hasn't happened will happen. Faith. On the other hand, is the belief that what hasn't happened will happen. Faith is, I'm gonna go on the stage and kill it. I am gonna be all together when I get on this stage and start speaking. So, you get to decide about the things that hasn't happened in your life. You're either gonna be afraid of them or they're gonna inspire you and motivate you. You are going to be encouraged that the thing that hasn't happened is going to happen. You have to have some th sort of thought about the, the future. You have to have some sort of belief about the future. You get to decide though, whether you're gonna be afraid of it or you're gonna have faith of it. I think that's important, but here's how we do it. We have to start interviewing our fears. Whatever you think you're afraid of, just interview it. And when you hear it loud, you will realize that it's silly for the most part. You gotta interview your fear. And what are you saying, David? What does it mean to interview a fear? I'm gonna tell you. Well, I give you a story. I tell a lot of stories. I was gearing up to leave the Cheesecake Factory. I started this t-shirt brand called Sleep is for Suckers. And the Sleep is for Suckers t-shirt brand is geared towards anyone that's willing to lose sleep to get what they want out of life, grinding all night long. I used to grind all night long. I'm working all day on my job and then I'm working all night on my dream until it was time to go to work in the morning. This was my life and I'm telling everybody, if you really, really want to be successful, you have to grind. You have to give up sleep. You got to give up watching TV all day. You got to give up all the, the luxuries of life that you want right now, going to the club, having fun. You're going to miss some birthday parties. You're going to be sleepy. You're going to want to rest, but you can't. This is the message that I'm pushing. 2010. And uh, two and a half years later, or two years later, I get this idea that I'm going to quit my job. So I'm afraid. I am super afraid. And this is a va guys, this is a va valid fear if you don't if you think about this. 
If you have a consistent income, you know how much money you're gonna make. If you quit your job to become a full-time entrepreneur, like you could go homeless. Am I right? I think I told the story the other week, a young lady that me and my friends, we used to uh, go to this uh, wing spot. Well, my friends introduced me to this wing spot. This lady had amazing wings. Long story short, took all of her money, life savings, some investor money also, and mortgaged her home to open this restaurant and run this restaurant. Ran it for a couple years. I think 2020, she started it. Ran it for a couple years. 2021, somewhere around there. And finally had to close it. She quit her job, put everything she had into this business and had to close down her business. Here's what's scary. When I said she mortgaged her house, that means I take out a loan against my home or I put my home up for collateral to cover this loan. Meaning if I don't pay back this massive loan, you get to keep my house. Ooh, goodness gracious. Can you imagine? Would any, would any of y'all go all in like that? Would any of y'all go all in like that? If this business doesn't work out and you have a loan against your house, this means you're betting your house on your dream. But if it doesn't work out, they take the house. Ooh, goodness gracious. Would you be afraid? Of course, this is a real fear. So I'm about to leave my job. I'm about to leave my job to become a full-time entrepreneur. But if this full-time entrepreneurship thing doesn't work, I'll be without a job. I could be homeless. So then I started to interview the fear. Somebody put interview the fear in the chat. Throw it in the chat. Interview the fear. Interview the fear. The fear, I will not continue until y'all put it in the chat. Interview the fear. I had to sit down and interview the fear. What are you doing to interview? They sit across the table from you and you ask a bunch of questions because you demand answers. Interview the fear. So, I said to myself, what am I so afraid of? Remember that first question? What are you so afraid of? And have you thought about the thing that you're afraid of? Well, this happened to me. I said, what am I so afraid of? And my answer was, my answer was, I'm afraid of failure. But I kept the interview going. I said, well, David, what happens if you fail? And my fear said, well, I'll be without a job. Like if I jump out of a job and I fail because of this business, I won't have a job and I could be homeless. And then I had to continue to interview. I said, well, what happens if you fail and you're out of income stream? And I said to myself, I would have to come back and get my job at the Cheesecake Factory because I left on good terms. It will take me back. I said, I would have to come back to this job If you guys don't understand the point yet, let me explain it to you. At the time that I'm interviewing this fear, my worst fear would be that I leave the job, fail, then have to come back to the job. But at the time I'm interviewing this fear, I'm actually working at the job that I would have to work at if I quit the job, became a full-time entrepreneur and failed. If you're following the story, my worst fear was me living the life that I was currently living at the time of the interview. Meaning, I'm sitting here at this job, the worst thing that could happen is I'd have to come right back to this job. Meaning, I'm at the job, I'm living my worst fear right now. Once I had that realization, I quit. I said the worst thing that can happen to me is happening to me right now i'm living my fear do you understand isn't that a good story living your fear 
So some of you are afraid to do something, but the worst thing that can happen is you're living the life that you're living right now. So what are we really afraid of? This is why I'm saying you have to interview the fear because once you start to interview and ask yourself questions, it starts to real you start to realize how silly you sound. The thing that you're afraid of isn't real. It's made up in your head. There's some people that are ruining relationships all across the nation because you don't trust somebody who hasn't cheated on you yet. Okay. I'm not going I'm not going there. Brandon. I'm not doing all that today. But your fear is crippling you. That's all I got. All right, y'all. All right, thank you so much for listening to my little monologue. Um, I would love to uh, interview some of your fears. You can stop the music, though. I would like to interview some of your fears. Somebody call in, man. Um, socialproofhotline.com. Socialproofhotline.com. And uh, it'll be a, you'll be able to be side by side with me and we're going to talk because I want to bring you into my YouTube live. Instagram, if you're watching this, I need you to rush on over to my YouTube channel because you need to be a part of this conversation because this live is going to end on Instagram. So you need to go to YouTube, type in Social Proof Podcast, click the profile and join the live, okay? So um, if you type into your browser, social proof hotline, uh, you could join for free. Um, Brandon, what you doing? You doing stuff? You got stuff going on? Let's have a conversation, man. Um, oh, yeah, we can set up that. Okay. Um, uh, I got my good friend Brandon Dixon here. Oh, it's not plugged up? Okay, well, but that, that's not good. Uh, it, it, it was going to work out, but uh, it's going to work out. Zell's got this covered. Um, can you slide that ecam over so I can see if someone's calling in? Um, social proof hotline. No, 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 no. Other screen. Other screen. That one behind it. Bottom left. Bat. Boop. Boop. Yup. That one. And just slide it over to the left. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. So do me a favor. Hit that little phone button right there on the left. The green one. Boom. Absolutely. All right. Hit a sign. Hit a sign, a sign on the right. Yeah, there we go. It guess one. Okay. Guess two. There we go. And Zell's gonna make it happen. We got a caller. Um, why is he? Do oh no. Okay. What's up? How how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you, my friend? I am good, dude. I'm good. Uh, do, is my camera stuff on? Everything good? Yeah, you're good to go, man. We can hear you loud and clear. Uh, question for you, man. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid to do? Um, I think a lot of us, honestly, Dave, are scared of. We're afraid of ourselves. Um, you're afraid of yourself. Of hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you're afraid of yourself. Hold on, real what? quick. Instagram. If you're watching this, come on over to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Social proof podcast you can join the live you can see it then you can call in um turn your phone sideways let me see something real quick turn your phone side sideways now yeah nah you can go back the other way it's all good <laughs> all right cool so you said you're afraid of yourself no 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 i feel like i feel like most people are scared of themselves and like dealing with themselves but for but for me personally i would hold on real quick why are you doubled why am I done? <laughs> the, Satan is busy, Eddie. Let's let's try. Hit, hit do me a favor. Go to a sign one more time. Uh -huh. Hold on one second. We got we working out our technical difficulties. That's right. That's right. Go to a sign. Bottom, bottom. Yeah. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. And then take click two again. Click two. All right. Try to click one again. All right. Um, go to a sign two. Guess two. Dang. Um, go to try to. Uh, I don't know why you're doubled. Okay, turn your turn your oh, phone oh. sideways again. No problem. No problem. No problem. I don't know why it's doing that. That's really weird. Yeah, why yeah. is it doing that? Hit the little button on the right. Uh, the, see that? Go go back, Zell. On the screen, hover over him. Go down that fourth icon, right there. Yep, yeah, right there. Click it. Yeah. Hold on, we, we got you coming, man. We got you coming. 
We're trying oh, to no, 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 go up to guest two. Yeah. Go to right there, guest two. Yeah. Bang. Okay. There we go. Slide him over. Yeah. Now zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. There we go. Zoom in more, more, more. There we go. Give us a round of applause. You got this thing going, man. All right, cool. All right, so you're afraid of yourself. What do you mean? Well, yeah, like, well, I was. Like, I feel like I was I was scared of, of my cap. Like, you know, I think a lot of us is, like, scared of what we're capable of, right? Um, hold and, on, hold on. Me, and, and turn him up a little bit, though. You said you're afraid of what you're capable of? I was. But, but, right, but right now, my fear right now is... Um, is success mm -hmm. um, and things like that. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny, I had to call in because, um, you know, I'm at, I'm at, this is the grind, I'm at work, this, which is cool. I'm at work. It's funny you talked about being at work. How you doing, sir? So why are you afraid of success, though? I don't understand that. Um, Well, I was. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are scared of what they can uh, come. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just know, talking because, about you right now. Why are you afraid of success? I don't get that. Oh, uh, I guess it's like because you, people. Uh, well, I'm scared. Of, I'm scared of the outcome. That's five one three, and what is the other one, sir? Four twenty. No problem at all. Okay, no problem at all. All right, you're good. And what's what's the outcome of success? Yes, sir. Um. Yes, sir. I'll put it right here for you. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. I'll put it on the stylus for you. Give me one second, Dave. I'm grandma. It's all good, man. Quit that job, bro. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> right. Leave, bro. You don't need this. <laughs> Working okay, for the so man. Yeah, we're back. Yeah, we're back. Um, but yes. Um, what's what's, what's the outcome of success for you? Right, right. It's just, I think the outcome of success for me, of course, is, it involves happiness. But for me, it also involves... Hold uh, on, bro. You're afraid of happiness? Well, well, that's what I'm saying. I think a lot of fears come from trauma. We're not about to start blaming stuff on trauma. Absolutely. No, nah, we can't blame it on trauma. No. Nah. nah, listen, nah, you I'm giving me you it. giving me Instagram answers now. For sure. Where right. it's like, yo, what? I can't do it because of the trauma in my life. Do you see, you heard the story of the the two kids who had an alcoholic father, where one of them said they came out they came out with a real big alcohol problem. Like they became drunks just like they dad. It was like I became a drunk because my dad was a drunk. But the other one Became really successful, went to college, huge, amazing income, a lot of success from his career. But he said, I never touched that stuff because I saw my father. So True. something's not adding up. Right. So, if so, you don't so want to do the work, say that. If you don't want to do what it takes to become successful, say that. But don't say you're afraid of success because you're afraid of being happy. Right, you're right. Those are excuses, Dave. So, so can I? So can I? I'm, I'm gonna keep it real, Dave. Uh, yeah. I've I've started putting in I started putting in steps to overcome my fear. My my, what I want to do is I want to be an influencer. Um, so I started um I started putting myself out there on video more. You know, I was scared. You know, I think I was scared that I wouldn't get the lights. But you know, I might get like three or four likes a video. But I'm I'm on their head top. You know, I'm keeping I'm keeping I'm staying consistent. Um, the thing that I'm scared of doing, I fall I fell in love with doing. You know, so I think, uh, like you said, you can't use excuses. You can't make excuses, man. You just got to give it your all. Yes, sir. It's going to be straight ahead to the That's right. They said it's some distortion or it sounds bad. Can you hear it on YouTube? More confidence. Normally, it doesn't sound yeah. that bad. Though. I guess turn it down a little bit. That's fine. Listen, what I need you to do is stop. Uh, you're not even getting over fear because you're not afraid. It's just you don't. You do know what's, what's required to become successful, to become an influencer? Yes, sir. So now you just got to do what's required, right? Yes, sir. So it's it's almost it's prime it's probably laziness actually. Probably not, probably not like fear. It's just laziness. We don't want to do what it takes, and we mask it as fear. So I want you to become an influencer, okay? So keep creating content, all right? Brother, I appreciate you, sir. All right, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, let me get that next caller. Go Dave, back uh, to one. I think we got to, yeah, let like that. Yeah, there you go. No, uh, no, 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 no. no. We're not exiting it. No, no, no. Continue with the, oh, no. Oh, crap, what happened? Oh, no. 
What's up, man? Can you hear me? Oh no. Hey, turn your turn your um your your live off. Can you hear me, Pierre? You can uh yeah, I can hear you, but I'm not seeing like no movement like as far as my image. I see you. on the camera. Oh, you I can, can see, see me. All can right, you I'm see just, me? I'm gonna just shoot. Yeah, I'm gonna just shoot my shot. Yeah, I can see you. Let's get to work. Um, What's up? So basically, man, um, hey, I appreciate you for creating this platform. So uh, I guess right now you can say I'm facing my fear because me getting on um, live and talking to you right now it is me facing like my fear of like being in front of people and like, um, you know, just expressing myself, being more like outspoken. So I would say that because, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm good at certain things like I can sing, I can do music, but get it in front of people and like displaying my like talents and gifts in front of people like that's one of my things that i kind of struggle with you know what i mean like you know like being um out there with um you know my talents and everything okay does that make sense kind of you're afraid of being out there with your talents and everything yeah i mean you know like uh I guess you can say it's like maybe like a shyness kind of thing. How do you feel right now? Extent. Uh, I mean, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm facing it because I'm on uh, live with you right now. There's people watching, and this is a random thing that I I don't normally do. Yeah. Um, what do you think? You what do you saying? think? Before you actually called in, what do you think the worst thing that could have happened would be? Uh, I mean, now, now that I'm thinking about it, I mean, I'm still alive, you know, there's nothing that really just, I'm, I'm, I am kind of sweating a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But the it's, worst thing it's, that could happen is you sweat <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So yeah, what, I, what I want you to do is get in the habit of whatever you're afraid of to do just start to ask that fear some questions because then you realize yo nothing really could have happened bad it's not like okay we was in person and i was a real mean person um i could punch you in the face you know what i mean and you're like oh wow i i I done met with a real gangster i done linked up with a real gangster that's that's a real fear right Right, that's a real you are wearing Let's say you're wearing a uh, a red hoodie and some black jeans and some red sneakers and a red hat, and you go into an all blue neighborhood. That's a real fear. That's some fearful stuff right there, because they gonna walk up to you like, "Hey, what up, huh?" And you gonna be like, "Hey, how you doing?" Yeah. And then, uh-huh. and things can get bad. Things could get bad. Yeah. But in this setting, there's not much that can happen. You understand? You feel me? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing what you're saying. It's really nothing. Uh, I mean, when you, when you narrow it down, it's, it doesn't make really much sense. Yes. Um, and that's, that's most of the things you're afraid of. Trust me. Most of the things you're afraid of, it's this line of questioning. Got All it? right, man. Uh, that was great, bro. Yeah, appreciate it. I'm glad you enjoyed this. Okay, this is good. We're going to talk to people who are also, just keep listening. You'll hear some other people, and somebody might have, like, some real valid fears, and we're going to have a good conversation about it, and we're going to make this thing happen. All right? All right, thanks. Man, no problem. Thank you, thank you. Okay. All right, so let me show you how to do this. Oh, you got it, Zell? All right, cool, cool. All right, appreciate it. Let's bring on Fred Harris. Let's go. Fred, what's up? Can you hear me? What's going on, brother? How you feeling? Man, I'm amazing. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Is is, is Brandon set up yet? Okay, cool. Um, talk to me, man. You afraid of stuff? Uh, Yeah, I would say... I would say my biggest fear is like 
is like thinking I'm missing something. Like, is it like a step that I'm missing? So like a little short backstory, right? Like I just did that in the summertime. Like I just, you know, I jumped out on my dream. Like, you know, I'm gonna just jump out there and I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna make it do what it do. Um, I, I quit my job and, you know, I got out there and I fell flat on my face. Mm. So now I'm like, dang, like, you know, like what did I do wrong? Like it's something that I, that I didn't do right. So, you know, like now, like this next time when I'm going, you know, jump out there again, I want to make sure I got all my ducks in a row and I'm doing things properly. You know, yeah. so I would say like, I would say like my biggest fear is like thinking that I didn't do enough market research or like, you know, proper systems that I had to have in line in order for my business to, you know, to grow, you know, in that kind okay. of way. Yeah. Okay. So you jumped out there, you quit your job, right? Yep. Yep. I quit. And then yep. you became a full-time entrepreneur. Yep. And then you had to go back and get a job. Yep. Yeah, I had to. Yeah. Yeah, because you missed a couple steps, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. And what happened? Because you missed a couple steps. Uh, I fell flat on my face, like you know, like like things ain't go like how I planned. When you I, say I, you fell uh, flat on your face, what do you mean? Yeah, like I so so like things I had in my mind, like how how things played out in my mind, it didn't play out in reality. You For know? sure. Like saved up some money. I'm like, all right, cool. I got something just in case, like, you know, if, if things was to get bad, I could take care of myself. Yeah. But then like once I got out here and I didn't have like that, that supplemental income, it's like everything just start like exhausting itself. So like now I'm, I'm broke. And then like now, then I had to get a job. So, yeah, you know, so like now I'm like, all right, cool. Now I'm back to the drawing board now. So, now, so real quick, when you were homeless, was it in the summertime or wintertime? Was it oh, really cold not, outside? Huh? Not homeless, no. I want homeless. Wasn't homeless? Yeah, no, 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 no. And I want homeless. Oh. oh, so you had you still ate every day? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you go out there, you quit your job, you still had a roof over your head, you still ate every day, but you learned a whole bunch of lessons, and now for the next time, you're better prepared to start your business, right? For sure, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, so yeah. what happens? If you jump out there again, well, now you probably know what you need to do before you jump out there. But yeah. what happens if you jump out there again and it doesn't work? You fall flat on your face. You're afraid of that happening. But last time it happened, everything was okay. Nothing really changed in your lifestyle, but you got a lot smarter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very true. Very I'm true. thinking like, I'm thinking you, it was cold in the winter and you had to sleep outside. And that's what you mean when you say you felt flat on your face, but the only thing that happened was you learned a lot about entrepreneurship. Yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. You yep. sound like a college student, really. I mean, a college student is broke and they learn some stuff, then they come back and they get better. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, it's like, yeah, so it's like I did learn a bunch of what I shouldn't do, but it's like, I want to learn the proper things to do so like I can like thrive in it. You know, next time I jump out there, it'd be minimal risk, you know, and like I can just get out there and I know what I'm doing for sure. Well, most of the time and you know, I can have the proper systems and the proper processes put in place and all that and I can just get out there and thrive. So like that's the, me, that's the goal now moving forward. Yeah, let me, let me help you. Let me help you. It's mm. never going to be right. Mm, mm, okay, okay. Ever. There's even when you like you, you learn, you could take the next three years to kind of figure out how to do it right. Then you're going to start doing it and realize that you're doing it wrong. The only mm. way to learn is to get out there and fall on your face again. And you just got to be willing to keep going through that. Yeah. Brandon, you got anything for you guys? You got some advice for this brother? No, because I was hardly listening. <laughs> Not at all. But what I will say is uh <laughs> if you quit your job, are you back to your job right now? Yeah, I'm at a job now. Yeah. Okay. You already started a business? Yep. Yep. And what's the business? Uh I have a photography company. Oh shoot. Well, there you go. You talking to him. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> all right. So there's like I actually got a list of things that you should actually do to, for, so for, you should work with businesses. That's the first thing. Start there. 
Are you who are you working with? Like portraits? What are you doing? Uh, portraits. Um, so uh, I made a decision to go from B to C to B to B. Um, so like I mainly want to work with businesses now. So I probably just yeah, go just to the schools. Just, just yeah. Okay. So here's what you want to do. Mash red. I even made made a list. You can just you can go ahead and write this down. You ready? I just talked. I talked about this on my class uh, the other day. You ready? So if you actually follow this list, this is for any business, but for photography or any business in general, if you do this correctly, you'll be able to charge whatever you want. It doesn't matter what business you're in. You ready? Yep. Um, the first thing is wardrobe. I know uh, this is simple stuff, but I promise you, you do this, you can charge, you, you can name your price. Make sense? Yep. The first yep. thing is wardrobe. Like, make sure you wear a wardrobe to make sense. The difference between a rinky dink whoever and you go to a five star restaurant whatever is their wardrobe what do you have on is it sleek do, can i put it on the gram make sense <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh two okay. is timeliness and i'm not just talking about show up times of course you got to shoot you want to show up an hour before i don't care how you feel oh i'm gonna show up like five minutes before it don't take but five minutes set up a light an hour before because had it been jay-z you would have been there a night before make sense Yep. But not yep. only your show up time, I'm talking response time. So if somebody texts you, oh, you text them back. You got a five minutes. You got five minutes to respond. Because had it had it been your job, they would have texted you. You would have been on the hey, Mr. Boss Man, we we good? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if it's a client of yours, you're not treating them with the same respect. All right. Mm-hmm. Number three is scheduling. All right. Scheduling. Like people be double booking, all type of weird stuff. Like make sure you're clear on your schedule when you're scheduling people. All right. Um, next is consultations. So you want to make sure that you talk to every single person before you actually uh, work with them. I know you want to put a link up and kind of click the button. No, bro. Talk to every single. Listen, I've been doing video for this has been 15 years. Hold on. About 13, about 13, 14 years. I've talked to every single client I've ever worked with in my entire career. Since 2011, literally, even when I met Dave, I see there is no button. There is no button for you to click. You click the button to talk to me. <laughs> okay, yeah, I got you. Period. Got you. People got button. Oh, just pick three hundred dollars. Damn that, bro. Hop on a call with every single person. You're gonna allow. You're gonna allow them to click a link and they don't know anything about what you do. Put it like this. If you got a, a site up and it says three hundred dollars for photos, and David got a site that said three hundred dollars for photos, what makes you guys different? And the photos look the same. Mm. The consultation. I offer consult. He don't. The consult is free. Let's say you talk to me, right? Let's say you talk to me. David still got the link up. I already told you what's some ideas. I told you we can do. I I, t- I gave you a full strategy essentially on how to make this shoot go well. David wouldn't give you a chance. He just like click on the little link. It's the link. It's three hundred dollars. <laughs> click that little link. Click on the little link. <laughs> click on that little link. So now you want to phone me? I get a chance to either go up in price or go down or negotiate. The consultation is everything. That's for every business. The non consult play is crazy. I know. See, everybody want to automate. Everybody want to automate their business and all this other stuff. Man, that's cap. Stop. Get off Instagram. Yes, sir. The yes, automation sir. stuff, yo, just automate your man. Put it. People talk about this automation and they want to do automation because they're trying to skip the work. Mm. And before you got to automation, what's crazy is you have to do the work to automate it. That's a fact. Yeah. Hey, book a call with Brandon. Oh, my bad. We done. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I'm done. Sorry. You got it. Forever. Go You're crazy, afraid man. of nothing, lucky, right? Yep, yep, yep. It's I'm just lazy. Me. Go to work. All right. Yeah, I bet. Sure. Right, let's bring in Lionel. Lionel. Uh, yeah, there we go. Y'all doing all right. Y'all all right with me? Look at them over there, man. Oh, they cook. Let's go. We lean back. What's happening? What's going on? What's going on, Dave? How are you? Everything's good, brother. How are you? Doing well, man. Just uh, just trying to get it in. Appreciate hey. you. Uh, let me hop in on the show. Oh yeah, no doubt. When you say you're doing well, what do you mean? I'm just doing well in life in general, just, Good. you know, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, hey, anybody, sure. anybody lounging in their car like that got to be doing for good. For sure. Right, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> What's the word, man? Get, so, so talk to me, man. What you got going on? Yeah, so um, 
you know, so I was actually thinking, you know, what am I afraid of? Because I, you know, when you were given a story, that's literally the same story that I had when I left. I used to work with TDA, Texas Department of Agriculture. Um, I was considering leaving at that time. And I remember talking with my mom and, and literally in that conversation, I was like, you know, it's crazy because people who, who have lots more going, right, and lots more to lose, they're always taking risks. And it's like, I'm two sure. feet off the ground and I'm scared to jump. If I fall, I'm not even going to hurt myself. I'm just going to get back up and just keep it moving, go back to the same job and keep it moving, right? So I did jump. So I got into uh, real estate. That's what I've been doing the last five years. So I think now when I'm thinking about what I'm afraid of, at first I was thinking, okay, perfectionism, you know, because when it comes to content and, you know, really putting myself out there, um, you know, it's like I'm, I'm kind of like waiting to shoot things and put things together and make everything right. But like you say, I kept thinking and I was like, no, it's really not perfectionism. I think what it really is, is perception. I think that's what it is. Like, it's the perception what of people, what like people now. think about you. Exactly. Right. I'm in my car right now. Right. It's, it's like, man, is my windows clean? You know what I'm saying? So I think that's the thing. Right. You know, um, you know, I'm shooting in my office, man. my office, not all together. Right. Or, you know, um, the video is not as clear as it as it would be maybe if it's um, if I shot in a different location, et cetera. I think it's all those different things that I'm allowing to keep me from just man, just just going out and just shoot my shot and just and just being real. Right. And just putting it out there. So yeah. that's kind of what I think. That's kind of what I think it is. Gotcha. The perception. So give me something that you're afraid of you're afraid of or you're afraid the perception is going to be bad are you saying like getting clients or what no it's not getting and that's what i'm trying to figure out like maybe it's like the perception that and maybe it's me just putting this on this is how people are looking as if maybe maybe i don't um, no no no, no. What my, my, my question is what is a scenario where this fear starts to kick in of your fear of perception? Just like just like shooting content, right? Just like basically creating content and putting the content out, right? So like, so like I say, you're maybe afraid it's like, that if you shoot some content and you put the content out, that people are going to perceive you in a negative way. Yes, not necessarily. Um, I, I, I'm thinking about all the things that surround the video i'm thinking the video and the production of stuff right so not it's not necessarily perceive me per personally in a negative way i'm just thinking about all the ins and outs of like okay if i shoot in a car right you know is this the you know what i'm saying is this the right frame etc stuff like that right you know okay. what i mean what um, happens if more, it's the wrong what happens if it's the wrong frame it nothing and okay. I, so that's the thing right nothing at all that's the point. Like you're telling me you're afraid of certain perceptions, but you can't tell me a scenario where you're afraid of a certain perception. Here's what we all do. And I think a lot of us do it. We are looking and grabbing straws at any excuse we can find for not being successful in doing the work. Right. We're just, we're reaching for an excuse because there, there has to be a reason that I have not become successful. There has to be a reason. And my wrong reason is childhood trauma, or I'm in the wrong city, or I don't know what frame rate to shoot at, or, 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 or. It's the responsibility of it. The responsibility of it. It's the responsibility. I yeah. don't know about that. What do you mean? If he actually gets his camera together and actually shoot content, he's going to have to keep that up. He'll have to keep shooting content. You got to keep shooting. So you're afraid of keep to that, keep shooting content? Too. Huh? Yeah, that's that's definitely facts too. You know, the cuz that's also something yeah, I've definitely thought of too or, or, or considered. It's like, okay, if I if I start doing this specific thing right on you know, can I can I keep this same momentum? Can I can I put something live out every Tuesday, for example? You know, okay. um, so hold on, hold on. I, just just I'm, I'm just I'm just backtracking. So so you're right, Brandon, yep. where we're afraid of the responsibility to be able to be consistent yep. 
But for one, what happens if you're not consistent? Nothing. You just don't build an audience. It's not like people look at you and say, oh, I hate him because he's not consistent. No, they just don't watch your stuff. You just don't, it just doesn't work out if you're not consistent, period. But you're like, okay, I'll shoot it this week, but I'm afraid if I don't shoot it next week, then people are going to look at me crazy. Let me let you in on a little secret. Nobody cares about you and what you got going on, if I'm going to be honest with you. Nope. Nobody cares. Even the people you're thinking in your head right now who care, they don't. They got their own life to live. They got their own stuff going on. You are not the only person that they follow on social media. They don't care. And they got a car with dirty windows. They also have cars with dirty windows. So just tell me the real reason why you're not trying to do the work to become successful, bro. I don't I don't get it. You got kids? Yes. I got one okay. on the way, actually. Oh, good. I mean, well, if you where do you where do you work at? I'm in Houston. Where do you work at? I'm, oh, I'm Fathom Realty. You're a real estate agent? Yeah. You making good money? You making yeah. good money? You making good money like to be comfortable? Yeah. Like you make like but, you said? No, not uh, it's not oh, where I want to be. Ain't no way, bro. Cause okay. ain't no way you s selling houses and you try to figure out a way to be a videographer. <laughs> I'm and afraid to build that. Nah, ain't no way, bro. Is you said like you you straight your bills are paid every time. Like you're not gonna miss a beat. Kids eating good. Like yeah, that's fine. But it's just I just I'm just not where I want to be. Right? No, no, you no, know no. What that's not like, what I'm saying. I, I, are you? What I'm saying is, your money, the money you bring in, is it comfortable enough to be able to live a decent lifestyle for you and your kids? You yeah. Pay your car on time. Yeah, everything but, like that. But, but you know, but you know how real estate is, right? So yeah. at the end of the day, right? You know, three good. That's not consistent, right? You know what I'm saying. And so obviously, I know a big part of it being consistent is me being able to actually break through and make sure that I'm putting out and continue to connect and build an audience, right? You know what I'm saying? To have consistent lead flow that I, that's just what I'm bringing in, right? You know what I'm saying? So I know it's a part of it. Yeah, your Wi-Fi is going in and out. But I do want to know, can we, is he back? Your, wi, your Wi-Fi going Sorry, out. My wife was, was calling. You said your wife was calling? Are you back? Say something. Oh no, nah, I can't. I can't even hear you. What's crazy is, oh. are we up? Are we? Yeah, you good. Yo, what's crazy is when you're actually making like a decent yeah, amount of money. Oh, he's back. Is he back? He can't be back. He can't just be back. You got me now. Yeah. I don't know if it worked that way. Do it. You gotta <laughs> just assign it. He back. You gotta assign it. Is that's he on? That's not worked. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, sorry. I just had a call come through. That's my bad. That's all good. So obviously, real estate isn't super consistent, right? Yeah, up and down. And you have to create content to be able to brand yourself for real estate to be more consistent, correct? Yes. So what you're saying essentially, and this is what I gather when my twisted brain puts things together, you really just don't want to be, you really don't want to do what's required to make more money so that you can spend more time and create more experiences with your children is what I'm gathering from this conversation. Okay. Is that right? I, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna accept that that at the end of the day, yeah, I'm just not doing the work, right? So you gotta think about this, bro. You really have to think about this. Your ability to take like create content is directly related to the experiences that you're gonna have with your children. Or the time you have to stay away. Because eventually, if you if if you get in a real slow season of real estate, you got to drive Uber. You got to spend more time away from your children. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. 
So every time you decide to manufacture an excuse to not do the work, I want you to imagine like kneeling down to your children saying, hey, the reason you can't have some stuff that even you deserve, imagine your child getting amazing grades and being an amazing child and they say, dad, the only thing I want to do for spring break is go to Disney World. You have to look that child in the face and say, hey, we're not going to Disney World, but not because you don't deserve it, because dad don't feel like doing nothing. And I keep coming up with excuses. You know what excuses are, son? Let me explain to you what an excuse is. I use them all the time. And I know you're watching me, so you have a son or a daughter? Uh, so the, the daughter Maybe. is coming. We have a 16-year-old son and then a daughter. That's on yes. The and yeah, he about your height. You gotta say, hey son, listen, we got some generational stuff going on. My daddy ain't do what it was required. He made a bunch of excuses. I got the excuses from him. So for your 18th birthday, I'm not buying you a car. I'm about to pass down these excuses and you go out and live your world with excuses. We think it's it it sounds funny, but our children see us. Right, right, right. No, that's real. And it is a bit it is a big possibility that they're gonna adopt some stuff from us. But if you have a conversation with your son, like, yo, I'm super scared to shoot this content, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Do you know what that says to your son? Oh, daddy said we gotta do what's required. And you start getting these mantras as you grow up as a child. I got a bunch of mantras from my dad. I, I can hear his lessons, even as a 39-year-old man. My dad. I played a basketball game. I won the game. And maybe, maybe this is a little trauma. Maybe. I won the game. I had a bunch of points. My dad said, but son, every time you go up on the left-hand side, you lay it up with your right hand. He said, you need to lay it up with your left hand when you're on your left side. And I said, yeah, dad, I know, but like I was dropping buckets. He said, well, maybe the team won't be as easy next time. And maybe you need this one left-handed layup to go in. So after the game, I remember it like it was yesterday. He takes some rope, grabs my right arm, and ties it behind my back and gives me a basketball. And he tells me to go dribble up and down the street with my left hand. Yeah. I'm excited. I want ice cream. We won. He said it was good. But son, you could be better. So he taught me, yeah. he taught me that you're going to have these weaknesses and you can't walk around life with handicaps. Mm. Our kids are watching us. My question for you is, what are you teaching? Mm. Are you passing down fears to your children? You Got to be careful. Okay? No, that's good. I, I really appreciate that. And I think reframing it, in that way and me thinking about my son and my daughter will definitely it's keeping that why in front of me that will help me to push through and and, and keep working um regardless of whatever it is that i'm trying to manufacture you know what i'm saying so I yeah believe. absolutely let's get it let's get it Girl, you big trap you you hey <laughs> what up man trap and pulled up i'm on a live show What's up, family? <laughs> <laughs> What's poppin', baby? <laughs> <laughs> Trap don't care whose show it is. It's yeah, his show when he walk in the building. All right, man. Pleasure yeah. pleasure talking to you, man. Let's bring on the potiologist. You about to shoot with Donnie? Yeah, ever since I'm here, you need me? Yeah. Hey. I'm here. All right, so you need me. let him borrow that seat. Let's set up another one. Yeah, Let's yeah. set up. Nah, I'm not Dang. kicking him. I'm sliding him. I'm sliding him <laughs> down a little bit. Down a little bit. <laughs> Let's set up another one real quick. Good, family. All right, go ahead. You can sit Why there. Why can't see me? I need to see. Because you got to sit down first. Yeah, I don't be getting no work done over here. Y'all got slippers we on. We be working, man. Mm. Podiologist, what Too up? Too much money. Yo, what's going on? What's going on? Man, everything's good, brother. Uh, you just so happened to have Big Trap in the... So, Trap, you be watching the hot seat, right? Yeah, I'm in the hot seat? No. I would love to no, be in no, the no, hot no, seat. No, 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 no. I need hot seat energy from you right now. Oh, that shit you ain't said nothing. Come on, let's go. Podiologist, talk to me, man. What you so afraid of? <laughs> so I actually realized what I thought it was before was imposter syndrome, but I was actually wrong. 
um, I actually unpacked it the other day with the therapist. I realized that I'm afraid of letting people down, right? So for example, like I've had people on the team, right? And just not really performing, but I'd like keep them around just because I'm afraid of like letting them go kind of thing or like just how would they feel kind of thing. And dude, that has been handicapping me like crazy for the past year. And I'm only just realizing it right now, but I just don't know where exactly it comes from. Uh, but I think that's one of the biggest fears that I've always had, but haven't really unpacked it until I kind of heard everyone talking before you like, why is it that I care? I mean, caring about people is important, right? But why do I care so much? Is it a validation thing maybe? Or I don't know what that is. What do you think? Um, um, I think as you grow your business, you do worry about people. Um, you may want to keep certain people around you for various reasons. Mm-hmm. I think um, until in, until you get burned or until your business is affected by someone else's mistake, then you change your perspective. Mm. Right? So I had a situation where um, I was trying to stick with the people who helped me in the beginning. You got to, man. Well, and then... I put some things in place and the people in the beginning didn't want to abide by what I put in place. And immediately I had to tell myself, it's them on my business. Everybody got to (laughs) go. Everybody got to go. You know what I'm saying? And so now. What about the loyalty trap? So again, loyalty has a price, right? And so you got to ask yourself, um, Am I in this to succeed or am I in this to just be loyal? And then I looked at my daughter and was like, I got to succeed. And so for me it was, but I learned from that. And now with everybody who working with me now, I let it be known. Like, yo, I want you here, but I will get rid of you. I want you here. I want you here. Matter of fact, I need you here. What you do is so essential to where we going. But here's the standard. And if you can't uphold the standard, I'll get rid of you because I know there's more people that want to, I can find that will uphold the standard and me and you can still be good. good. Mm. You feel me? So I think I think what, 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 what you need to do in your business, and this would have happened, if you set a standard for your business, the people who don't match the standard, they'll stand out, and you have no problem getting rid of them. <laughs> or they want them to get rid of themselves. They'll get which, which is what which is what happened. Yeah, they'll get rid of themselves because okay, here's the standard. Oh, and the standard is wrote in black and white, so we don't even got to guess what it is. Yeah, here's the standard, and if you can't uphold the standard, I didn't get rid of you. You got rid of you. Mm-hmm. So that that'll even help you out even more. So, brother, set a standard for your business for performance. For you know, uh, execution processes of what you got, what your daily structure is, what they're supposed to be helping you with. Here's what I expect from you. I'm not gonna lower my expectations, yeah. right? Because if I lower if I lower my expectations, the business regresses. And if the business regresses, I'm not gonna make the money I'm supposed to make. We're not gonna impact the people we supposed to impact, and I'm gonna cut you anyway. Bro, I was I was literally just in the airport talking to a guy. He was working for a law firm. He said it was a white guy who owned a law firm and hired all black people. Mm. Right? He was like, yo, just mad black people. And the the problem was he was, uh, he was like too nice and too loving of the culture mm. to a fault. Mm-hmm. So somebody need a job? Oh, yeah, I got you. I'll give you a job. Hey, come on. I got you. You do this, that. The, the business crashed. So this is like the story of him starting his own law firm. But because he was in that environment, he was like, yo, dude was just too loving and too loyal. $10 million a year business crashes because he don't want other people to think that he can't hire them or give them an opportunity. Mm. That's dangerous. But also the people who who we hired, not everybody has the same definition of loyalty. Mm -hmm. So if... When we grow up, we probably all both was in the same neighborhood, in the projects or whatever. We both thought the same things. But as we got older, Trap got a business, Shan got a business, other person don't. 
what you feel like loyalty is. Since it's not in black and white, whatever you feel emotionally, whatever you feel like loyalty is, that's what you think it is. And you'll end up with mm-hmm. some business that's not in black and white that will cause harm to the business. But you don't think you're doing anything wrong. You're thinking like, well, God, that's what we do back in the day. We wouldn't do this. Like, no, we're not doing it here. We, this is actual business. That's what we do back in the day. <laughs> Remember we did back in the day. <laughs> he's like, no, that's that's not what I feel like loyalty is. Yeah. So those things change as we get older. Yep. What do you think your problem is, brother? No, I think even just hearing you guys talk and kind of hearing some of your stories over there, I think the easiest thing to do would be um, essentially send expectations like up front. There you go. Vacation. But I think it's just hard when you have to go back and kind of correct those mistakes. No, it ain't. Like in tra- <laughs> No, it ain't. <laughs> it's not hard. Okay. I think we, I think a lot of times too, Shines, we are too, uh, we are too emotionally attached to people instead of performance. Mm. What if you want the best out of you? Like you feel this person can do it. It's just. All right. Uh, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example in my Here's business. my question for you. Come on. Is it easier to find a leader or create one? Is it easier to find someone talented or create talent? I think this is good. So here's what I did with Brandon. Be on my team. So B started as a shooter. Capturing content. Right? And then I made everybody on my team do a test. Like the disc. It was an assessment. And after reading B's assessment, I say, B, you fired as a shooter. <laughs> but what could I say? You got, you got way more potential. And where my business going at, I don't need another cameraman. I need another brain. Mm-hmm. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I need you to do this. I need you to help me do this. I need you to research this. But check this out. I'm going to pay you more money. But check this out. I ain't going to just pay you the more money out the gate. I'm going to only pay you. Hey, beautiful. I'm going to only pay you the money based on these metrics. Mm -hmm. Meet these metrics. I'll give you six figures, dog. We're going to check them every three months. In the beginning, he wasn't really getting it because he was stuck on being a shooter. So then I said, here's what I need you to do, too. And I need you to shoot. (laughs) <laughs> but because I got other shooters, I need you to do, just do a few little things. So it worked out. But we molded him into what I needed him to be. And so you can create that if you have the expectations and the standards. You ready? I love it. So All right. There it is. Appreciate your try. I'm just here talking. Ronnie Wiggins has pulled up. Let's go. I, I let it be known I was here for you, though. Yo, no, for sure. No I let it be known I was here for you. You know what I mean? Y'all Absolutely. I thank you, Sam. All right, does that help you? Nah, I appreciate you, my brother. Yeah, man. I want to show you something, too, though. Tanner, does that help you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Super helpful, man. So uh, definitely. Get- crazy. Appreciate Dang. Dang. Yo, are you going to teach me how to do it, Trap? Are you going to teach Dang, me? That ain't what I wanted to show you. I want no, to show you. you did want to show me that because you showed me that. But I was but really trying to show this. I, like bullshit. But I'm you saying, all right, can I, can I learn? Okay. Can yeah. I learn? I like yeah. On the wrong Trump, way. please. Hold on one second, Tanner. We not just got to, he just showed me something ridiculous that, and he not, yo, first off, I feel like if my friend making money in the stock market, I, I should I know show. how to make money. Yeah, not, That's what I want not show slash you. a month. That's what I want to show you. <laughs> <laughs> Go crazy, Trap. <laughs> hey, man, he all the way rich on some real, just <laughs> out of here, just for no reason, just. Anyway, does that help you, Tanny? That was super helpful. I appreciate it. So what you going to do moving forward? I'm going to try to my best to get the emotions out of it and just be, I mean, I don't think I can be quite as analytical as Trap over there, but I do get where the mindset comes from as far as separating the two. Yeah, it's, it's somewhat difficult to like get the emotions out of there, right? Be it's like, you don't just get the emotions out of there. It's like you have to act in spite of the emotions because you got to feel what you feel, mm-hmm. but you have to be logical enough to make the move in spite of the fear. You know what I mean? Like superheroes aren't super superheroes because they're not afraid. It's not like Superman isn't afraid. Yeah. Sometimes the, the deck is stacked against my man. You can't think, you can't say, oh, I'm just Superman, I'm going with, nah, because he be getting cooked sometimes actually. You think, <laughs> listen, 
you just got it. You got it. You got to move. Michael Jordan. You can't tell me that Michael Jordan didn't have some sort of anxiety about playing against the Pistons or playing against a really good team. Maybe it wasn't his anxiety and his own ability, but he's like, yo, what if my team don't do what they supposed to do? You can't tell me that there's, there's no thought of anxiety or whatever, but they act in spite of. So I think the main thing is, do you like being average? Yeah, I think a lot of Michael Jordan Trapper just came in here like everybody is like focused on I am emotional I do care about people but it's high level energy it's above average it's gold it's mamba mentality over everything Mm -hmm. so if you average AF or if you regular or you are mediocre I don't want you around me so if you you have to have that type of energy gotta add that is that helpful Yes, very helpful. Thank you. I'm going to go practice my left-hand dribble now. There you go. Are you in Atlanta or are you, you back in Florida? Yeah, I actually just got done setting up the basement studio over here. Oh, that's in Atlanta? So, yeah. yeah. I like it. I like it. All right, good stuff, man. Congrats. Welcome Appreciate to the city. It. Pull up on me more. All right. Um, hey, listen, y'all. Uh, call in. We would love to have a conversation with you. Social Proof hotline.com social proof hotline you can do it on your browser and um we would love to bring you into the call man thanks to everybody to just join so b uh you, you got it you got anything that's been on your heart and mind since this conversation yeah man i feel like that it's not that deep for a lot of people like i don't think people like want it as bad as they think they do mm-hmm. you know i mean it's a lot uh, it's a it is a responsibility when you get to a certain like level mm-hmm. and you think about that you overthink and think about what that level looks like when you get there. Yeah. My man was creating content. What's then gotta fire people? It's like two years from now, three years from now, I am gonna be successful. But look at what all the stuff that I created in spite of that. Yeah. I got to be successful. I gotta be, I gotta buy all these cars, but then people are gonna look at me like this. I gotta create content. I gotta do all this work. I gotta hire all these people. All this stuff that's weighing on your shoulders that people look at and think about when success gets here. Yeah. And on the flip side, if you're comfortable, let's say you're making a decent amount of money at your job. That's why I think when you lean, lean back, kick like that, bro, I'm telling you, when you're With doing arm that, head, that like. comfort, yo, that comfort, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that man. comfort and like middle class type of mentality is hard to break mm. because it's not that deep. It's like, man, my kids are kind of, they're kind of cool. Like they got, they don't, they want stuff, but they don't need anything. Yeah. That's a very dangerous place to be. That's a fact. That's a fact. So it's really, it's it's really not fear, man. It's just you don't you don't want it that bad. It's not that deep. It's like, do I want to make multi six figures? Mm-hmm. I want to. I want the cars and the house. I, I want it. Yeah. But this is I told you the camera. It's brand new. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Honda Core, brand new. Heard, it's up. It's, it's up. Yeah. We good. I, I, yes, I want a Maserati, Rolls Royce. I want all the things. Mm-hmm. But just on the court, it got car play and everything. It Come on, it's lit. Leather, leather seats. Man, I the the average is the greatest uh, enemy of uh, extraordinary, right? Yeah. Uh, and this is why I'm so glad. I'm so glad when I was working at the Cheesecake Factory that I was only making about 30000 Because if I was making, say I was like a manager there. I'm telling you. Let's say I'm making 150000 <sighs> Why would I quit? I don't know if I go nowhere. And you can take you can go to Jamaica. Uh bro, what? <laughs> yeah. The whole they give you two weeks vacation. When the last time you've been to Jamaica for two weeks, bro? Never. What I'm saying is You feel me? Would you quit a hundred and fifty thousand dollar job and and risk? I wouldn't be as uh I wouldn't be as fed up. I wouldn't be as no. inspired or motivated to quit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Let's bring that. Let's bring that caller in. We got a caller on the line, Adrian, or is that Adriana? Adrian. Oh yeah. Hi. Hey, how are you? How do you pronounce your name? Adrian. Adrian, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Dave? I'm incredible. You enjoying the conversation? I am. Good, good, good. How can we? And assist hi, you? everybody else. And hi, Donnie, if she is there as well. She left. <laughs> mm. Let me turn this up. Can you? Yeah, okay. we hear you good. You're good. Can you hear me? Because everybody says, "Can you hear me?" Okay, so uh, should I just go in? 
Yes, please. Okay. I um had have a food truck, a food cart. It started off as a food tent, moved up to a food truck. I had the I had people around me, family that I had helping me and it it got so draining because they were going against like every single thing that I did that I shut it down. I shut it down so bad that I lost everything except for my trailer which is still back there, but I mean, I lost everything. And it was, um, so you weren't making money. Um I was Okay, so you had this I food was. trailer. It was just, yeah. And you, were make, and you were making money. Yep. And you shut it down because of what again? The pressure from people who were, who I, I brought in because I felt like I wanted it to be a family business. So I brought people in, oh, but it was so much pressure because they were going against everything mm. I was saying mm -mm. and doing. Mm. Brandon, every time I hear the word family business, I'll I'm be triggered. I'm telling you, bruh. Oh, my God. God. I feel I feel for you, sister. <laughs> we love you. We, Me we too. Like, like, you. like, really, really. So, recently, I, um, I'm not trying to get um, emotional because that's really, I'm not there anymore. But I had gotten, like, super depressed. Recently, I pulled myself out of depression. And one of the reasons or ways I did that is because I have this like playlist and it's my my day's favorite videos and so i'm watching your interviews with people and i'm watching people go from like some real real tough experiences and, and making it yeah um and so i'm ready to a new iteration is not going to be because i had a vegan food truck it's not going to be like 100 vegan it's going to be other things now but i'm just ready to go at it alone Okay, real, um, real, real quick. I just want to, I just want to understand because I gotta like peel back the layers too. And real quick, if y'all want us to keep going, go on and drop a little super chat, man. We take all the super chats and we invest in youth businesses, kids who have businesses. Just drop a little super chat if you want us to keep going and answer this question. Well, I'm gonna answer this question anyway. But if y'all want us to keep <laughs> going, I learned this last night. And uh, anyway, oh, let's do it. First off, I'm sorry. Real quick. Let Kids Play Podcast Activity Playhouse. My sister, Nayetta, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Let's start March with Facing Our Fears. Let's go. Make sure y'all rock with her. If you have any issues with your kids, little kids, she is the baby whisperer, okay? So uh, thank you so much, Nayetta. And we also have King's Chamber Beard Oil, okay? King's Chamber Company. There's a lot of power in the room today. What up, Trap? I will let Trap know uh, that you said what up. Do me a favor. Change the camera to Brandon. Brandon had a bald face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about right. Before he started using <laughs> King's Chamber. I'm talking about, yes, I saw him yesterday Shout out to King's at a meetup. <laughs> yeah. He had, a, he was clean shaven, and he yeah. said he was going to pick up some King's Chamber beard oil. I'm telling you. And look at him now. I'm telling you, next day, I had no... Two days Voila. ago, I had no facial hair. Come so on, thanks man. Thanks to King's Chambers. It's up. Thanks to King's Chambers. It's Absolutely. Up. Okay, so drop a super chat if you want us to keep going, even though we're going to keep going anyway. But I should have said that like 30 minutes ago, but just drop a little chat. All right. Um, so just for clarity, you, had, you have a trailer, and you are serving food, and you are making money. But because your family... You had too much pressure from your family. You decided to shut the business down to not make money because of your family. I and need you. Get, I need you to clear that. Corporate clear. and go into manufacturing, you know, just regular nine to five work. Now it may seem like that's nuts, but when you have a lot of pressure, it drains you of your energy. Yeah. So I did not have the energy to get it together and sometimes like this the sabotage would cause me to be super late for events and it just it was always so much it was always so hold bad on, and, i'm sorry yeah. i mean i'm sorry because hold on, on because of the sabotage you were late for events i don't understand like um there were times when i needed like i was taking care of packing everything in the trailer or you know, going to um, get certain supplies, but I needed other people to do other things, and I needed them to be certain places at certain times, and they wouldn't get there for like hours. 
Mm. And so I'm working or I'm telling everybody, you know, well, we don't have that yet. We'll be open in 15 minutes. We'll be open in 15 minutes. We'll be open in 15 minutes. Well, then it, I lose money. Hey, real quick. But also I'm mad because I know that it's not necessary. Yeah, for sure. It's not necessary, but that's not your family's fault. That's your fault. Agreed. That's my fault. Agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Like, did you, so here's, okay. So first off, most people, well, what I'm seeing is what's happening is that people are just like hiring people because we're family, but you didn't qualify them. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? So essentially, like, most, like, we need to just let go of the, listen, y'all, when we start a business, let's just start the business and do what's required to do the, the business, right? Write out mm-hmm. this, the standards, this, the SOPs, this, what we need, this, what time we need to start, this, what, what the roles I need filled, right? So if you need a cook, we need to find who is the best cook who can do this thing. Not just saying, mm-hmm. hmm, let me think who in my family can do the thing. Yes, four people, either Aunt Sherelle or Aunt Jocelyn will do the thing. No, who in whatever city you're in can do this particular job at this rate an hour? Let me look at your resume. You know what I mean? If your family so happens to fit that resume, then fine. Or that qualification, then fine. But if they don't, they don't get the job. You don't yeah, I wasn't at extra. that point. <laughs> so when y'all say well, making well, money, it's different well, no, from when, when I, when I say but I even, was making money. I wasn't but, at that point where I could hire people in except for interns. If, you, you know, if then. Did but, you, wait, but, but did you try to? Did you try to get interned? Did you try to ask? Did you put the application? I did. Resumes? I went through. Um, I went through Handshake, which, uh, like they partner with colleges, and so you did Handshake. And what else? Mm-hmm. Um, I pretty much just did Handshake. You didn't do enough. You just did Handshake. I don't know what that is. You well, did I handshake. did what I could do because I didn't have. What was that? What What could else could I've done? So, one. Look up. That's the best. That's a question to ask Google. What else could I have done to get people? <laughs> right. Go to Google. Right. Two. You can actually go to. They partner with schools, but did you actually go into schools and kind of find out what do people you need? You got to find out what role you need. Where are the people who can actually do the role, and then go there. You can cold call. You can send emails. You can go to Fiverr and scrape a list of people who can potentially like do things for you. We just Fiverr? didn't do enough. We didn't do enough like. Stuff. I think we just went to Handshake and then hired a family because they would do it for free. But although they'll do it for free or, or, or at a discount, you right. end up and losing Right, and that's money. where I was. Then that's what happened. Because that's where I was. So I think, like, being realistic, strangers will only do something for free <laughs> if they're emotionally involved or connected in some way. So I did have people that okay. were willing to help because I was at I was at that that phase where I could keep going. I was making enough money to start building the business up, but it's not probably not your kind of money. Definitely not Dave's kind of money. Like it wasn't that I could not, Let's not do hire that. people at do $20 not do that. An hour. Do not queen. What? I had to hit you with the queen. Rich. We're not going to do that. When I met this man, <laughs> when I met this man, I shot fam video. Photos, whatever. Yep. I shot I shot film for free for two years. Facts. Yep, you did. I just watched your video. You didn't um you didn't see my comment in the videos. However, no, no, no. no I just want to make sure let's let's stay here. Let's stay here for a second. You said that people aren't good. there's on but so much people to do. Yeah, but let me no, I'm addressing that fact right, right there. You shot that for two years, but let's remember like the background. You were editing videos and you didn't really have i'm not trying to be disrespectful disrespectful but you weren't doing anything for i don't know how many like a year or six months or whatever when you moved down to atlanta and your wife was supporting you while you were editing videos all day so (laughs) when you i did what so when you had the opportunity you saw dave you saw his videos you saw eric thomas you saw his videos when you had the opportunity to meet dave and you saw he was at the mall yeah, that was somebody who was your. That was an opportunity to you. You were emotionally involved. You wanted to meet him anyway, and you you were awestruck when That's you met awesome. him. So That's awesome. So so even oh, though that was okay. free, that was still an opportunity. If somebody doesn't, no, 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 if like they're not this. invested, what 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 reason do they have to? I got you. So you feel what like nobody's going to be invested in you because of what? I'm not saying nobody. I'm just saying I did not have. There are people around. I'm just saying I did not have anyone who 
did tell me right. except for family and a few friends. But you do feel like it's possible. But nonetheless, I don't want to get like too off topic about I'm, about I'm, that. But go ahead. No, is, yeah, no, yes. no, we're here. So you do feel like it's possible because I don't want to. I don't want to say a lot of stuff that just don't make sense because we're just saying stuff to be saying stuff. But what does make sense is there is somebody. If you are, if we believe in you enough, that's what you're saying. What we'll makes you on the same page? If they believe in you enough, like I believe in David, if they believe in you enough, they would do whether it's two years for free or one year or six months or something to be invested to the opportunities. That's do we do we agree on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have to do is just find people who will believe in the vision, right? Mm -hmm. Can we at least start there? Let's find people say, listen, I got it because you got to think there's somebody right now who would love to have a food truck or a food truck or whatever. I want to get into the food trucking business. The best way to do it, they can go find a work for somebody or they can work with you because you have a better opportunity for them. Right. You have to believe you are the David Chance of this story and you have to believe that's who you are. Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity for people. Right. Hey. I have a business. It's a food truck. It's a whatever. If you want to get into food truck and color, whatever, learn from me. Right. And we can actually build this thing. And as we grow, you will learn a lot of things about it. And then they can go out and do their own food truck or do culinary. You can't say what other people want, will or won't do or what they want to do actually for their for their life. Yeah. So here's here's the, the here's what I'm gathering. OK. You did not quit this business because you had the wrong family members. You are simply the wrong leader. You haven't figured out a way to lead people. Whether it's right. family or not, I don't think you have the ability to lead people. Like in that situation, you're waiting on someone that you probably already know is unreliable to bring you something, which you probably should have just got it the day before because you couldn't trust that person anyway. I don't care if it's family or not. So we're kind of blaming the failure of the business on our family when that's not the case. It's you just weren't ready to lead a business or run a business, which is cool because now you understand the anxieties and pressures that come with this thing, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So now you're about to go back into the business. I'm not saying go back into it by yourself. Go back into it being a better person. You need to start studying some things like how to handle anxiety and deal with pressure because I'm telling you it's going to happen again. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. going to happen again. Because whatever business you're in, whatever year it is, whatever food truck you're in, you have to take you with you. And if the you that starts this new business is the same you that started the last one, we will 100% have the same results. So we need to fix us. We cannot blame this thing on our family anymore because they don't deserve that type of slander. It's not their fault. Okay. You understand? I want you to read some books on leadership, okay? Yeah. You have the power to control your own success. When things don't go right in my business, it's because I haven't led my organization good enough. If Zell don't understand stuff, it's not his fault for not understanding. I haven't figured out his language. Mm. If Zell just doesn't, or, or Reese just doesn't get it, or Kay just doesn't get it, I don't get mad at them for not getting it. I need to like figure out a different way to say it. I'm taking 100% responsibility. Now, if something do happens over and over and over and over and over again, then you gotta just let people go. But most of the stuff in our business and in our life is our fault. And you've gotta know that. Okay. Okay? Yep, thank you. You're Get very back welcome. Out go forth and be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you too, Brandon. You're welcome. Get back out there. You got it. Yeah. All right. Take care. Shouts out for Nella with the 199. She in the same vibe. She says she spent three, four days in Disney and spent a hundred dollars. I'm like, dang, how you do that? And she just dropped 199. So you probably got to add that to the list of Disney expenses. Let's bring mm -hmm. in L'Oreal. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you bring her in, okay, you can hit the button, but don't bring her in yet. Hey, if y'all want us to keep going. You just learned this. He just learned we, this. We listen. He just learned this. I'm willing to take another call, but but I need y'all to support my youth entrepreneurs with a super chat. I don't care how much it is. I need some support. So before we bring in this next guest and answer some more questions and to give y'all some more inspiration, motivation, and information, 
I need y'all to drop a super chat, okay? Don't be here and freeloading. I'm not taking this call until I get a super chat. All right, you can bring you can bring the person in. <laughs> I meant what I said, y'all. I meant it. What's up? I can't hear you. The I can't. Headphones got got to be them headphones. Got, got to plug them in. Them the ones. Come on with it. You could do this. Yeah, there it is. I what can hear you. Mean? Yes. How are you? Can you hear me? No. I'm doing good. What about you all? Uh? Okay, I can hear you now. Cool. Hey, do me a favor. So, hit that little tool, the fourth one on the bottom, and we might be able to zoom her out. All right. How are you? So, what you afraid of? Nothing. No. No, no, no. Hold, hold uh, on, hold on. It's on her picture, though. Fourth. All right. What y'all got going on? There's a lot going on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, that's... Uh, Oh, um, I see what's happening. Okay. I think I see what's happening, but I don't got the time to fix it. Okay, go for it. Go ahead. Get it, get it back to the full screen. Okay. What are you afraid of? Sometimes my own success. No, you're not. Sometimes. Why does everybody say that? Why do you think you're afraid? I don't know. Because it'd be something it? that I really want or what I set mean? my goals for, and then I get it, and then I'm like, oh, shoot, maybe I can't do this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, that's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Brandon, hold on, real quick, because I'm going to talk to you in a second, but I want to talk to my friend real quick. It's a responsibility thing. She said she'll have a business, right. get some success, right. and then say, I can't do what I just did. Yeah. Right. Is that what you're saying? I Be can't do this, sick. even though you just did this. You can't do it again, or you mean you don't want to do it again? I think sometimes I just be stuck in the fact that I did it. Oh, Wait, have you did it before? That's a better question. Yeah, she did it, but uh, once she hold on, hold on. Once she does it, she realizes she can't do it. <laughs> is that what you said? So funny, you shouldn't laugh. Is that what you said? I mean, kinda. For kinda. Me, once you do it, you realize I can't do this that I just did. That I think that sense. a lot of times I shoot my shot at things. I'm, I'm gonna just shoot my shot at everything I feel like is possible, and then I actually get it. I get it. It's not imposter syndrome because I end up doing it, but I just get into a moment where I'm like, okay. How can I actually do this? I made this plan. I told these people these things, but I, I get it done. Can I see an example? Can I hear an example? But she says she get it done. She'll do say what so, she wanna do something for a client, then get it done. Get and is everything cool? Cause she's not a scammer. She takes people's money and fulfills the goal, but then she realizes, man, I can't, I can't do, that. do this. <laughs> can you give hey. me an example? Stop doing it. Yeah, so I, I'll I'll write up a proposal for a program where I'm like leading workshops or something for somebody. And I'm like, well, I want to work with them. They didn't ask for this, but I'm gonna just write something up and send it. And I've done it before so I can do it again. And then I send it to them and they're actually like, Okay, let's do it. So I get kind of stuck. Um, and I think I just psych myself out. So that's when I say you ask when I'm scared of and I say success, I psych myself out. No, no, you, you you sent the proposal, they got it and they said, Let's go move forward. I mean they, right. they pay you, right? Right. And then you do the thing, fulfillment. Right. And then when 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 do you get stuck? I get, I mean, it just takes, I don't procrastinate, but it just takes way more time than I feel like it needs to be to actually get it done. So I get through it, but it just feels very painful or like very, you know, a lot a lot of energy goes into psyching myself out when I could just be getting the deliverables done. So when you when they say yes, you're like overloaded with God, I gotta do all this work now. So they say, I didn't know they're gonna say yes. So now they say yes, now I gotta do all the work. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think I'm there. Hey, listen, this ain't got nothing to do with that either. It's just you're lazy. <laughs> okay. God. No, <laughs> for real. No, sir, no. I'm saying you want the money, but you don't want to work for the money. Yeah, well, yeah. We put mm, it in, right? That's what you think? Right? Yeah. No, that's you're, not you're right. right. You're just lazy. You're not afraid of success. You're just lazy. You don't want to do the work Yeah. that it takes okay. to... Be successful. He, I'm talking about. It's like you send a proposal. They say, "Okay, I want to pay you," you pay and it. now you don't want to do the thing that you told them you want to do. And it's not that you can't. Right. It's not even that it's taking you a long time because to. of like because it just takes a long time. You just don't feel like working hard to make money. Yeah. Why did you send a proposal? Why didn't you just not send it? 
Because it's, it's not that I don't want to. I don't want to work hard. I just I I dream big and I shoot my shot and I'm always just surprised when it lands with people. And no, it's not that's that what I'm saying. Work. You dream big, and you're willing to like do everything, but the work. Yeah. Except for I do it. Yeah. So no. What? Yeah. What I'm saying is, you'll do it, but you don't like doing it. After you told them what you was going to do. The fulfillment. Right. So that so makes me lazy. It simply yeah. makes you lazy. Yeah. That's it. Like there's, That's, if if we can fix the lazy, you'll be fine. You just don't want to do the work. It's not like you again. can't land a client. It's not like you can't deliver because you can deliver. You just don't want to do the work. Which mm -hmm. means, which means, we should probably figure out some work that we want to do. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't send proposals for work that you don't want to do. Find a job, career, business, product, service that you actually don't mind doing. So I do consultations, like podcast consultations. It's $2,000. We'll sit there 60, 90 minutes, and I will fix your problems. 100%. Easy. I can do this. Well, I love it. So when I, when I get the person, I'm excited. There's a little anxiety because I'm like, I don't know exactly their situation or what they're dealing with, but I'm about to go do it. And I love doing it. So after I tell them what I can do, I say the prices. They say, yes, okay, I can do this. I sit down and I knock that joint out. It's lit. Me and Brandon, we are flying out. We got one of our clients. We flying out to Houston to go change their life in the content creation space. I'm excited to go. It's not like, ooh, now I got to go to. You know why? Why? Because you're not Cause lazy. Because we're not lazy. And yeah. we're willing to do what it takes. You yeah. need to be willing to do what it takes to become successful or the idea of the person you want to be in your head. It's going to require some work. Yeah. So there's some people out here, they're willing to do the work, but they can't land clients for some reason. They are dying. Listen, there's some people in the chat dying to have the skill set that you have to be, have one, the confidence to approach the client, two, send the contract and three close the client if somebody could do all of that they'd be like yo i'll do the work no problem yeah you are lazy and privileged and that job probably pay you good yeah for sure work job pay me good <laughs> i'm saying it out of love yeah i feel like i feel like that you um you can't get emotional first of all we've been bamboozled to believe that Everything that we do is out of passion, out of love. When you work a job, most times people working jobs, they don't absolutely love. Even if they do love it, it's the people in the job they still might not love. Right? Right. So they think when you get a business, it's like everything is going to be candy and roses and everything I touch is just going to be gold. And I'm just love every piece of it. That's not the way it works. There is going to be parts of business that you just have to do. Right? I love don't shoot my shot, as you say. I love sending proposals. I love when they pay it. I loved getting the money and going shopping. But the part that comes with it that you don't want to do is the thing that you have to do. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. You can't shake it. If you go find something else, like, you know what? I'm going to do this instead because this is more fun. It's going to be parts of that you don't like. It don't matter. I don't care if you love gardening. I love gardening. I love doing grass or whatever. But then the weeds pop up. Damn, I hate pulling out weeds. But you want to have a good garden. It doesn't matter what it is. They're going to be parts or pieces of the business that you're going to have to deal with. It's called business. Take your emotions out of it and just do the work. Because as you get a lot of money, increase the proposals, right? Let's say, how much is it right now? Uh, well, the last one I was surprised at was 50K. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say it again. I said the last one that really had me surprised that I got it was 50K. I can't even do no more talking, bro. I'm like, I'm, I'm out of here. Okay, just out of just out of curiosity, right. how much how, how much do you make at your job? Um, I just started, so I got to get my numbers together. But the, you know how? But you make money per hour, or they told you how much you, your salary is going to be? No, I'm salary. How much is the salary? Oh, fifty five. All right. Okay, okay. I just the 50k, how long is it for? How long it's a one year? How long is it to fulfill it? How, um, so the project the project was three months. 50k in three months. Okay. 
and you're about to make 55K in 12 months at your job, correct? Mm-hmm. You don't see nothing wrong with that math? I do. It's sick. So I'm there's the- some people in the chat that said um, it's anxiety. You experience anxiety? Yeah, sometimes. So not really. Not really. Before we you get, just don't want to do it. Yeah. So let me ask you this: How many of these fifty k proposals can you? How long does it take to send a proposal or create it and send it? How long? How long does that take? For a project like that, I'm talking um, about the proposal. I'm talking about the project, the, like the proposal and getting it sent out. Like how long does it take to kind of create, send it, build out, and send out? Maybe a week. A week to send out one. Okay. Yeah. Can you send out one of those a week every week? Yes. Can you send like five a week? Is that a thing? No. You well, send one I mean, a week if though. It's the same, if it's the same one to different people, then yeah. So can you send like five out a day? I don't know. How many can you do? Can you you can send one a week though, right? Yeah. How many when you when you send them when you how many does people have to see for people to kind of like on that one? Can we send out like ten on that one day? You take a week to build it out and send that to ten different people. Yeah, that okay. makes sense. Okay, cool. So can we send 10 a week? You send 10 a week. You think you can close one out of those 10? 50K? Yeah. Okay. Can that be your homework, please? Okay. <laughs> I can do right, that. We got it. Uh, there, there's a lot of layers, a lot of layers to what's happening because um, – we don't have enough time to diagnose exactly what's happening. I would love to invite you to the hot seat. It'll be a, where do you live? Know. Where do you live? Where do you live? I do, watch, I do watch every day though. So where do you live? Where do you live? Oh, Detroit. I'm sorry. Okay, I you want to dig? Yeah, come on. Uh, I want to invite you to the hot seat. Just Please. come kick it. Come kick it with your boy real quick because we got oh. we got some. I I I need to pull back the layers. Yeah. Because I don't know if it's, uh, I don't, I don't think it's anxiety. Um, there is a strong element of laziness. It's not that you don't know what to do, but there's something else that you're not telling me yet, and it's something I don't even think maybe that you know. But sometimes it takes a little while to like really break this down and find out what's happening, because something is happening. Because it's math, just the math doesn't make sense. And uh, I would imagine that you are in, you are constantly in the wrong environment. There's something about the environment that you're in. And I know you watch the Social Proof podcast, but it's something about the content that you're consuming. It's something happening up here that's not firing right. And it's because of something. And you really, really need a coach or a mentor or something to kind of shake that loose so that everything's working and functioning properly but some something up here is blocking you something's broken and uh you need some assistance Mm. because you got you got talent and it's it's i one thing i cannot it it really pains me is wasted talent you are gifted but something something else is going on and i would i would really like to find out what it is so I got to be on the hot seat for us to figure that out. I think we can figure that out privately. Oh no, we need a hot seat. I mean, yeah, you just have to. I'm trying to have you do it without sending me a wire. So yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's <laughs> hot seat be the best I'm bet. Tra- yeah. Otherwise, it'll cost you fifty grand to get to fix uh, the fifty grand. Bro, yeah, fifty grand I, I, for you to say I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm trying to fix. I'm trying to help you with a with a, a cost free issue. No, here's the thing. It wouldn't be just you're late. There's a reason why you're saying what you're saying. There's a reason why you're lazy. It's something. Right. I just don't know what it is. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, uh, listen. I will s- send me a DM because I'm gonna follow you because I want. I want. I do uh. want to talk to you. Go make that money, Queen. Go don't make let that the money. money. Make you. Go make that Thank money. You, uh. All right. No problem. Uh, yep. Before you bring in the next person, yo. The first off. Shouts out to the super chats. Okay, um, we got a couple of we got a couple of super chats. They not even little super chats. We got the uh, first off Tanny Ooh. with the full. Oh, oh, we going straight to the hundo. I was going to work up to it. It's all good. Dope world for the hundred. Thank you for looking out for our children, our future, brother. We must reach the young geniuses. Dope is the name of my stud dog. Yo, what? I'm not sure what. 
Well, shouts out to your stud dog. It don't oh, matter what it dog. is. That, okay. You done supported some youth businesses today. So we appreciate you, man. Tell stud dog I said what up. Um, we also have Tanny. Take the call. Love it, Tanny. We appreciate you, family. Yo, first off, Tanny the reason why I took that call because he was like 499. I take the call. Support the babies and bring me on this thing. Come on, life would be. Pull up. Where you at? Did you call in? Life would be. Let's do this. Christopher Rendon for the 199. We appreciate that, family. That's love. Dirty little flirt. She a dirty little flirt. <laughs> You're a dirty little flirt, ain't okay. it? See, look at the picture. Yeah. Dirty little That's flirt. Dirty little flirt. We appreciate that 499. Yeah. Yes, sir. Listen, man, y'all better watch out for that one. That's the one you you think you getting at and oh I, That's I a dirty little flirt. Girl. She bags you, my boy. You gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouts out to Dirty Little Float. Oh man, my girl, Natalie Rojas. Like my little sister, man. Appreciate the realness, David. Do the work. That's my dog right there, man. Yo, shouts out to hit me up, Nat. I miss you, man. You gotta pull up on me. Before we let this, this next person in, you know, yeah, because I'm not taking no more calls. Yeah, we're, we're taking until more calls. somebody yes. over a super chat is going to support youth entrepreneurs. Yes. I say it all day, no more. If y'all want to support this next caller, yeah, share but, some love. Yeah, put Dope World back up there, man, because that's my man, Stud Dog. Rocks with Stud Dog. Okay, go ahead. You know, you can send like a lot of those proposals a day. You know that. You can send a bunch of proposals, like a lot, them. a day. Because it's the same proposal, it's to the change same the name word. of the people, the company. Yeah, we you gotta get on the hot seat. That's a lot to uh, pass. That's what I'm saying, Why does bro. it take a week? You already built the one. It's the same one. Does it change? Well, I mean, I rather you just no, do the work of name. sending proposal. It's the like. I mean, no. for sure, it's a number. First layer is. We just shoot our shots, right? We just get out as many as possible. Yeah. But then um, as you get comfortable with that, you can start, you know, having conversations saying, hey, well, this is what I do, and I'll customize it for you for sure. But you got to do something. Yeah, by the time you get 200 something thousand, you can just hire somebody. Oh, for sure. Life would be through a couple y'all. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, this has been Free Smoke. Well, I got, I got to say something cool. Um, listen, y'all, the world without... The world creates the world within. Oh my gosh! Ain't that was terrible. You know what? Just come. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna figure it out. But y'all follow me on the gram. <laughs> Brandon shot me. All right, bro. Follow Brandon shot me, man. Appreciate it. We got another super chat too. Life would be done. Spent the block. Life would be done. Spent the block. Uh, yes, I called in. Uh, it still says waiting for host. My name is Bria. You see a Bria? We don't see no, oh, light, no, we don't see no Bria. Did you hang up the other person? Okay. All right, give me L'Oreal. Come on, life, will, hold on. Are you under Rodney? Life would be, because we see a bunch of Rodney over here. Hit, hit the little, hit, hit, hit Rodney. I bet that's, I bet that's life with Bria. No, that's Rodney. That's Rodney. Give me L'Oreal. We don't see a life with Bria. Hit, um, hit, uh, go to socialproofhotline.com. Let's do this. What up, L'Oreal? La you there? You ain't here? You ain't with it? You muted yourself. All right, bring me in. Bring me Rodney. My host name is Bria. I don't see. I don't see you, Bria. We see Rodney though. We see Rodney. Where you at? What up, Rod? Why he not showing up? Okay, there we go. Rodney, what up? What's up, man? How are you doing today? I'm blessed, brother. How are you? Man, God is good, man. Yes, yes. You ain't never lied. Yes, what are you afraid of? So my biggest fear right now is uh, coming up on this March the 2nd, I'll be married for five years. Uh, and I'm I got sorry, coming up on uh, what? March the 2nd, tomorrow. Okay. I'll tilt be your, married for five years. Tilt your phone up a little bit because we're having like uh, issues just... Put your phone up a little bit. There you go. It might seem weird better? on your end, but we had to zoom super in. That's good. All right. So March the 2nd, I'll be married for five years, and I got married at 20. Hold on, hold on. Are you, are you okay? Everything good? Yes. You all awesome. right? Never been better. Okay, cool. I'm just checking. Five years. Yes. I'm I'm running up on seven, maybe? 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Go for it. So coming from a very young man and single at that, um, coming into now manhood where I'm responsible for a family and a child, um, wanting to do the entrepreneur thing, having the bug, um, well, having the idea, I should say, um, and tired of working for others is like really is challenging for me. And I think the uncomfortable afraid comes from what if, what if I fail? What if I don't have that safety net anymore? Bear with me for just a second. In in your business or in your marriage? I ain't got no marriage advice. No, sir, he's not interested right now. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, work. So yeah, I had to do this um, at work, but I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it work. Oh, you good? You good? So, man. um, there is a like a blockage. There is a wanting to do it, but there is, I guess, the the know how of of um, of understanding what to do. And also, um, they say when you want something so bad, the ET says it. He says when you want it as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Yeah. And, and so what what is the thing that you want? So I want to be I want to maximize on my greatness is what I want. M- money is not not the thing for me, Dave. Is it's, it's whoa, 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 being, whoa, 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 whoa. What is it that you want? To pursue my purpose. What is your purpose? Full time. So I'm a speaker. Okay, so you want more speaking gigs? Yes. It ain't got to be that deep. To, we can like give a, we can, I want more speak. Can you say that for me real quick? I want more speaking gigs. I want more speaking gigs. Okay. How much do you charge? So I know what I would charge, but I haven't had the opportunity to charge How anything. How much? So right now in the arena that I'm in, I would charge at least 1500 1500 so you mm-hmm. want more speaking gigs for fifteen hundred dollars or more, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, say that real quick. I want more speaking gigs that pay me fifteen hundred dollars or more. I want more speaking gigs that pay me fifteen hundred dollars or more. Okay, good. Now that we're clear on what we want, what is the issue? The security feature, uh, the the thing that says, "What if I, what if it doesn't work?" Are you getting a lot of speaking gigs now? So I had my first one at, at Chattanooga State this last Wednesday. So is it working or not? Yes Good. and no. And the reason I say that is because you just asked me a question. You said, um, well, what do you want to do? And I think that that's my whole thing is making it too hard, making it too, too complicated, too difficult. For sure. And I'm trying to, I really trying to figure out a way to come outside of my head to just do it instead yeah. of overanalyzing it so, so much. I like that. I like that. So what we want, we want speaking gigs that pay us $1,500, correct? And you got mm-hmm. one that's coming up next week, right? No, I've already done this one. I've done that one probably two weeks ago. Oh, you did it two weeks ago? Mm-hmm. But you haven't got another one? No. Okay. How did you get the first one? A friend. Got you. Who is okay. also a speaker. This is, this is really, really good. Two things I just found out. One, we can get more speaking gigs if we start hanging around more speakers that can't make their gigs. Right? Okay. That's yes. one. Right? Yes. Here's, here's, here's what I found out on two that you're extremely lazy okay? because you're not doing the work. If you were going to get a speaking gig for $1,500, what would you do? Like if I gave you, if I gave you 60 days to get another gig and I said, at the end of the 60 days, if you get a speaking gig that pays at least $1,500, I give you 30,000. What would you do? Go to work. I got, I got to, I got to get it some kind of way. What does that go to work look like? opening my mouth to ask individuals who, who have spoken, hey, do you, are you, 
do you have any gigs currently? Do you, is there anything that you can't make at the moment? Is there anybody that you need to fill in in that particular position right now? Um, Good. What else? Get online. Explore my resources online. There are there's a lot of agencies out there that that pay speakers, and so I just get get on those sites and see if there's anything that matches my my purpose and my vision, or or in alignment with those things, or with that community to be, or even create the opportunity. What else? Give me one more. Um, for me, uh, I think we have a lot of, we have like chambers of commerce and things like that around here. So go to my local chamber and speak there. See if they have any events coming up for. Uh, Let me tell you something extremely interesting that everyone here just saw. I didn't give you any ideas or any answers. All I did was ask you, what would you do if you were going to go get a gig? And you told me all the stuff that you would do. Now, the real issue is, do you want to do the stuff that you just said to live the dream that you want to? So you're saying, I want to live my purpose. My purpose is to speak. I want to speak for $1,500. I know exactly what I need to do to get speaking gigs for $1,500, but I don't want to do that. Which means when I say I want to live my purpose, it's a high possibility that you're not telling me the truth. You don't mm -hmm. want to live your purpose. That's what it seems like. It's not like I get like it's not like you ask me a question, yo. How can I get some gigs? And I'm like, oh, do this. Go to your local chain of commerce. Holler at your men's. Yo, call the schools. Like hit up the websites. I didn't give you not one answer, which means you have the answer. You just don't want to do it, and that's a problem. I wish you didn't know what to do. I wish you was like, yo, bro. I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to get the gigs. And then I'm like, oh, well, he's willing to do what it takes. He really wants to live his purpose. He's passionate about this thing. But now you're just talking. You don't really want to do it because you so know what to do and you're not. That's 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 part of it. Um, I spoke with a, with a gentleman like not too long ago, well, one, one of my really good friends. And he, sa he says to me, he says, man, um, his dad is a, is a local pastor here in the city of Chattanooga. And he says, man, um, my dad told me to cut you off. And, and I didn't take I didn't take it any kind of way I was, I, I was wanting to know why. And he says, because where we're going, pretty much you're not conducive to be in my circle. And I said, hmm, okay. Um, but that's part of the reason. But the other part of the reason is, I don't know, I honestly don't know where to start. I've, you're I've li had, you're I've lying had... to me, bro. You're lying to me. Okay, you so just I told can me where to, to start. Come on, yes. Ronnie, come on, let's not do this. I can go to the the local, I, and I have been to to some meetings. I've been to a couple of places to get these gigs, but it's hard to get in the door, Dave. It's hard to make a million dollars. What do we just stop doing it because it's hard? What do you you didn't think it was gonna be easy, did you? I didn't. But my I guess my question is, what do you do when nobody knows you? Like the the resistance. I get you're gonna face resistance. I understand all of that. But what did you do? What did what did you do in the meantime of that resistance? How did you deal with that? How did you cope with that? Is what I'm is, is, is really do more so my question. The is. work you do, the work you do, the work you go to the local chamber of commerce. If you're going to speak at schools, you call the schools. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. You're not discovering anything in this conversation right now. I have no answers for you that you don't have yourself. I don't know why you're creating all of these reasons why you can't win when really you know exactly what to do. You're just not doing it. I'm trying to help you get out of your head. It's as simple as Monday morning, you call a bunch of people who could lead to a gig, period. If you don't want to do it, you don't know, just say that. I would rather be ignorant than stubborn. Ignorant says, I don't know. If you don't know, you just don't know. Stubborn means I know and I'm just not going to do it. But I'm going to come up with all these reasons why I'm not going to do it. And they're going to be very valid in my head. I have no idea what the story of your friend cutting you off has to do with anything in this conversation. Because he was saying the same thing that you were saying. He said, if you're not going to do anything with, with your effort, your time, your energy. Oh, you're cut you off. crap. Which means there's other people that know about you. 
Now this is this is the the plot thickens now because this is how you are and this is how you've been. You're gonna come up with some real good excuses to not do the work. Then one day, and here's the thing: I don't one hundred percent know how to get someone to want to live the quotes that they live by. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. You'll drop the quote, but that doesn't mean anything to you. If it means something to you, you'd actually do the work. And I'm not, this ain't, this ain't like, you're not breaking boulders. You're not like restocking heavy boxes on a shelf. This ain't like physical labor. This isn't, this isn't rocket science. This isn't trigonometry. It's here's a list of people I need to call and I'm going to call them and ask them if they would pay me to speak, period. Do the work. Tell, do me a favor. Are you on your phone right now? I am on my phone currently. Okay. When you get off this line, I want you to text your wife and tell her that you are going to, whatever the goal is, I'm going to get X amount of speaking gigs this year that pay me at least $1,500. And when I get home, we need to map out how that works. Now let me give you some information. Now that you understand that you're the problem, right? I do understand that That's now. crazy. That should make you feel a way that someone's willing to cut you off because of who you are. That, no one's ever had to cut me off because of who I am. That's, that, that's, that, you need to sit with that for a minute. There's something toxic about me that somebody can't be around me. That's different. Well, let me give you some game. You ready? Ready. You need to set some work goals. Work goals. Meaning you can't control how many people say yes to your proposal and book you to speak. You can't control that. The only thing you can control is your attempts at bad. Meaning you need to set a number with your wife of how many people you're going to contact every single day, Monday through Friday. It might be three calls a day, but we're going to make these three calls. We're going to call three schools, three colleges, three organizations. Oh, there's an event coming up. I'm about to go through uh, 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 Eventbrite, and there's some events. I'm going to make sure my work is three calls a day. Here's what I know for a fact. How many days we got left in this year? We got what well, we just got into March which means it's 10 months. Let's just say 30 days in each month. We got 300 days. Let's subtract the weekends, which maybe 250 maybe, let's say 240. We can make, we got 240 days, three calls a day. That's like 700 something, 700 and something calls. You mean to tell me you can't land a gig if you called 700 people? So we are not going to skip a day, three a day. Okay. Go do the work because I have a fear. You're going to come up with some other weird reason why you can't succeed. I don't have one at this point. You've given me everything I need. Let's go. Let's do the work. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's get it. All right. Yo, first off, shouts out to dope world. What's my man named Bud Fox? Nah, stud dog. Shouts out to stud dog. He dropped another 50 piece. Save our children. I used to be one of them. A stud dog is a male dog used for breeding. I breed and rehome French bulldog puppies. Bless your efforts. Yes. Yo, shots out. Keep, man, your business going to grow. You know why it's going to grow? Because you keep putting seeds in the ground. And when you put seeds in the ground in other people's lives, the trees actually grow in our own life. So, yes, I appreciate the support. And we are going to keep supporting these youth entrepreneurs. Appreciate that dope world. Uh, Yes. All right. So let me get Bria real quick. Um, Y'all, listen, we got to wrap up in a second, man. I got a a meeting in about 12 minutes. Bria, what's up? You here now? What it do? Right. I'm nervous. Why? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Don't be nervous, man. We friends. What are you so afraid of? Um, I think right now my biggest fear is like if if my business grows more than where I'm at right now, how I'm gonna manage everything and like what effect that'll have on my kids. If your business say it one more time. Like if, if I grow, more than where it is now. I feel like I've maxed out my schedule now. 
So what's your business? Girl, and I'm an esthetician, so I specialize in Brazilian waxing, and then I sell my own products. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you're an esthetician, and you do the work yourself. Yeah. You make good money. It's cool or whatever. It's cool or whatever. Yeah, I work a full time job though too, so it's like kind of on the side. Part time. So you make good money. It's cool or whatever. <laughs> it's all right. How many hours a week do you work at your job? 40. 40 hours? And mm -hmm. about how much time do you spend being an esthetician? Um, I'm open every, well, I'm open Monday through Friday for four hours a day. And then Saturday, Sunday, every other weekend, because I like to have the two off weekends to spend with my kids, 9 to 7, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. 9 a.m. to 7 a.m. What 9 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. What time? I mean, what uh, day? What day? Sunday, but every other weekend. Every other weekend, I'm closed because I, I have to Sunday. And you take yes. Saturdays off. No, that's Saturday and Sunday. Every other week, though. Every other week, Saturday and Sunday, you work nine to seven. Correct. So every other weekend, you hang out with your kids. Correct. Okay. And you work your job, what time to what time? Uh, well, my job is super flexible. So I make my own schedule at my job and I make my own schedule in my business. So I can really work my job whenever I want to, as long as I get the 40 hours in by the end of the week. So right now my schedule, Monday through Wednesday, I go to work from home uh, 7 to 11. I clock out, I go to my business. I take my clients from 1130 to 330. I come home, I get my kids off the bus, spend time with them after school, cook dinner, whatever. I clock back into my job, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. My babies are in bed by 7.30 every day. Um, so I'm at work at 10 p.m. I get off and I work on my business, like behind the scenes, administrative stuff that I need to do until like 11, 11.30. Then I go to sleep. I'm back up at 5.30, I do that same thing. Mm. And oh, it just 30, sounds like the regular life of someone who works. And how old are your kids? So my oldest, she's eleven. My ba my middle baby, she's five, and my son, he's two. And eleven, then on five, and two. Eleven, five, and two. Yeah. On Thursdays and Fridays, I work my main job from home from seven to three thirty. And where then your my, where your two year old be at? My two year old does the daycare, but the daycare is like four houses up the street. So I just walk him up the street it's real convenient you. that's going on but i feel like my schedule is maxed out like i'm tired yeah for sure how much you make on your job um a year i'm like at 56 56k and what's that about a thousand a week pre-tax i mean post-tax pre-tax i think so Pro probably about 3500 um a month somewhere around yeah. there between like so a little, little less than a thousand a week right yeah. Well, <clears throat> so if we do um, $3,500 um, a month in your job, our first pit stop is we got to figure out how we can replace that in our business. Yeah, so I've been working on that. February, the end of last month, was the first month where I made more at the business than I did at my job in a month. Yeah. But that happened. Literally, I ran the numbers last night and was like, oh, I, I did it. Like, yeah. I know it's possible, but I feel like I'm working nonstop. How, how much did you make? Um, At the business? In the business. 38. 38. Good. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But that was maxed out in the time that you have now, right? Correct. There's so, still a little... Hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. About how many hours a week do you work in your business? Um, well, if we do four hours a day times five, um, like actually taking clients, because I'm not completely booked. Not yet, at least. Yeah. So, no, maybe 20, I would say. 20 hours? I'm just throwing that out there. I honestly didn't calculate it. Okay. It's all right. So I'm, I'm just saying, I'm trying to sit, figure out where you make more because sometimes in the, we'll make more in our job than we do in our business. But if we're going to, we need to have a quit number or a quit scenario, right? Yeah. So you want to create 
um, an idea of what your life will look like to make it comfortable for you to quit. Mm -hmm. So I want to make X amount of dollars in my business. I need to be making, um, I don't know, $4,200 a month consistently for six months and have this amount of money saved for me to quit my job. And I've done a that. cushion. I'm sorry. For me, I've done that that math, that thinking, and that number okay. for me is 500. If I can make 5500 in my business every month for six months, I would be willing to to let the job go if I can consistently do that. The fear yeah. comes in, like there's a lot to run your own business. Like there's a lot to go into that. And I guess with quitting my job, that would free up the time. I just don't want to be so involved in my business that my kids are like, mom is always busy. Well, right now you're involved in your business and your job. And I'm sure they say the same thing. Where at least, I, at least like if you are just doing your business during the day while they're at school, then you would make, you know, the same money that you're making. You got to run the bag up. You got to run it up, but you make the same amount. You make the same amount of money that you're working that you're making now with a job and a business just in your mm -hmm. business if you're just working while the kids are at school and then once they come home from school you get to play with them that makes sense that's the first step but we got to figure out how to get to 5500 consistently right yeah but the second thing is a, one of the ways to scale a business is to raise the average order value of your customer so mm -hmm. Every person, what's the average amount of money that somebody spends with you? So on average, it's about with the with the tip or with with no tip, like just, just the period, basic. just period. So basic service, the majority, I would say ninety eight percent of people come to me for a Brazilian, so it's fifty five, but the majority of people tip too. Okay, so the average person spends about fifty five dollars with you, right? You need to figure out a way to get the average person to spend a hundred. So it might be another service, some special offer that you make, um, an additional product. Maybe our plan is to create a product line so that the average person spends more money with me. Okay. I do have the product line that you know I sell, which they usually will buy. The products will last them for about two weeks, three weeks, depending on how often they're using it. And the bundle that I promote the most is twenty five, so that ups the the ticket to seventy five dollars, but not not a hundred, not not quite there yet. So yeah, maybe well, adding on service. Yeah, for help. sure. Learn some new, some other skill or some something. You need you mm -hmm. need to have some sort of add ons. Okay. Because that that that'll get you to your number a lot faster. Because we're raising the amount, and it's not more work, it's just raising the amount of money that somebody spends with us. Mm -hmm. Or we need to get really, really serious about this product and start this e-commerce vibe and really start pushing it. See, this is good for me because it at least lets me know that I'm on the right track. So I did just switch to a Shopify e-commerce thing for my products literally like five days ago, and I've been working on building that site You yeah. know, out. I got all my products added in there to really start pushing it. So the advice that you're giving me at first, I was like, I don't even know if this is the right thing to do, but it, it sounds like it is like yeah, a, for at sure. least. Yeah. You're on the right track. You're on the right track. Okay. It all comes down to planning. Or if, if you don't have a plan and you're just like running, you'll be there forever. Like you'll be on this hamster wheel just forever. So, okay. um, and especially, you know, our, uh, um, yeah, so you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Okay. I got the plan. I also wanted to ask while I'm on here if I didn't save my tips up to join the morning meetup, but I don't know how to do it. Like, I need a link or something. Oh, themorningmeetup.com. Oh, okay. Because we have Just these conversations every day. What I was I was actually going to suggest, like, you got to, like, read in some more personal development. Like, uh -huh. start, start there. Because that kind of opens your mind up to the possibilities, and it will accelerate your success. But I'm glad you said the morning meetup, because literally we have these conversations every day. So it's I not like, it. so my morning meetup family, they probably in here like, yo, yep, this is David. We just here every day, yeah, every single morning, Monday through Friday. So yeah, go to themorningmeetup.com. We'd love to have you. And uh, you're going to yep. get a lot of information. You're going to be right in the right environment for sure. 
that's what I need is I don't, I don't really have a community, you know, it's just me and my kids and I don't have like, like-minded, yeah. I get stuff like that around me. So I need something like that for sure. Absolutely. Join it. And then send me a DM. Let me know you just joined. Um, and I'll make okay. sure I'll follow you back. Cause, uh, you, you'll be family then. Okay. Well, thank you. No problem. No problem. Good luck. Can't wait to see you Monday morning. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, uh, so that was an amazing segue, okay? Go to themorningmeetup.com. You get these kind of conversations every single morning. I am on a call with our family Monday through Friday. Um, Thursday, every Thursday we do Q&A, so it's Zoom calls. It's not like, it's not a call, it's like Zoom. I see you, you see me. You can see all these other people. You'll see over 100 people every single morning. So for you all that really want to grow as an entrepreneur, I would highly suggest you going to themorningmeetup.com, 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 and join me. I know what you're thinking. For 500 bucks for the entire year, I know what you're thinking. You're like, there's no way that David is on this call live. This has to be a recording. This has to be a course. This has to be like a group led by other people. And that is not the case. I am there every single morning. Unless I'm traveling or something, I'm there. Now we have guest speakers. I introduce you to my friends. They come on. But it is it is the most valuable community that you will ever join because I'm not the only dope person in there. There's some seasoned veterans that have been in there for a minute. They've got the mindset. they got the work ethic. They are building and growing, and it is a private community. I don't hot seat them. they my family, okay? It should be just coaching. So we love you all, man. Go to themorningmeetup.com. We'd love to have you, and we are about to break out of here. But before we go, I want to say thank you to everybody that joined this live, everybody that supported with a super chat, everybody that shared this with somebody, everybody that was brave enough to show your face on the screen and have a conversation. Man, I appreciate that so much. I be feeling so bad when nobody calls it. Well, we don't have a show where nobody calls it, but it'd be slow. I'm like, dang, I want to talk to my friends. I want to really help some people, man. So uh, shouts out to you all. And uh, we have an event coming up July 4th and 5th called Podcast Summit, where we are focusing on all things content creation. If you want to start a podcast, grow your podcast, monetize your podcast, or understand social media, or understand how to create on a whole nother level, you want to meet me in Atlanta, July 4th and 5th. Use promo code social proof. And Zell is about to play this thing right now. Podcastsummit.com. Roll the tape. Ron Zell. Podcast Summit 2023, baby. We in the building. What we doing? Yeah, Podcast Summit, that's what we're doing. This is one of those events that if you miss, you actually miss something. Everybody knows media is taking over and David shares and leading the front. It isn't just about building a podcast and finding your message. It, it's about truly leveraging the power of podcasts to create, don't wait. Everyone here is a content creator or emerging content creator or aspiring content creator. And we have learned the tools necessary to create our own work. I think it's a lot of people that just didn't register their comment. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, we're not tripping on general. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if, if sure. I, I told them, hey, look, if they're not on it, we'll double check. If we got to add it. I want everyone logged yeah. so we know what the final number is. Yeah. I'm really just tripping off of, you know, the VIP masterminds. So yeah. We have certain limits for all those. Yeah. The preparation for the podcast summit was grueling. Providing this experience for creators of color, the sun, the vibes, the feel of Miami. It was all worth it. We do have a limit on All Star. There's a certain amount of people we can feed. Well, we don't have a limit anymore because we have oh, a bigger room. Bigger room, yeah. Yeah, we'll just have to pay for it. Got it. Yeah. So you technically could still sell All Star and Master Minds, or have people upgrade. What do we deliver to a broad audience of people who are in the podcasting space? I came here to learn more about branding and how to expand it into a podcast. Some people are interested in podcasts, and they're coming to find out how they can finally launch this podcast that's in their head. So I'm also here to learn about how I can monetize my podcast that I'm looking to launch in September and protect my brand legally. But there's another group of people who have been podcasting, but they have no idea what they're doing. It's not growing. 
They're not getting more views. They're not getting more download. I want to learn how to monetize. I want to learn how to grow. I just want to learn how to, like, I guess, engage with the people more. I'm just a mom who just wanted to do something crazy. <laughs> But you're holding it intentionally so there's more energy outside. Correct. Got it. OK. All right. Well, do, do your thing, man. Uh, how, how, if, if we're behind, how do we make up for it? Or we just push everything back a little bit? I think there are breaks that can uh, that will naturally adjust. Got it. And okay. get us back on track. Yeah. What's the lobby looking like? Is it busy? Are they out there? Did they show up? So once I got out on the stage, I looked out, and I saw a packed room on a Sunday. I was just energized. I was really just blown away because now I know that the people are here. We're about to you feed. See it? You see it? Y'all see it? Do you see it? In the back, do y'all see it? Can y'all feel it? Y'all know it? Your life is going to change in the next 12 months. Let me tell you about something I've never seen before. I've never actually seen a podcast booth set up for creatives to create in real time. So I'm talking about networking on steroids. You just met somebody in the room. You want to actually have a quick little interview or a quick little meeting. You could take them into one of the booths, ask them all the questions you really want to ask them in real time, record and document that, and actually put that content out right now. I've never seen that before. Crazy. Get where you need to get. So how that go? Uh, I'll be on her. Camera was shaking during the podcast interview, so we got to figure something out. I think when you're looking at production of anything, you should always be looking at it from a pessimistic perspective. What can I do to improve? What can I do to make this thing better? It might be the smallest change. People aren't looking at what's wrong. You could record a whole episode and there's a trash can behind you that nobody sees because nobody's looking at what's wrong. They're only looking at, oh, this is a good shot. You know, that's the one thing you can't hide during a live event. You know what I mean? Like, Say I launch a book. You don't know how many I sold. You know what I mean? Say I launch a t-shirt brand. Hey, get the shirts. I can be like, yo, it's popping. People are buying the shirts. Right. <laughs> Almost sold out. But a live event, like, if nobody's there, everybody knows that nobody's there. One of my biggest takeaways from the podcast summit so far was like an aha moment first when Donnie said, don't edit. It was like, Mind blown, because I'll be doing the most with trying to edit my podcast and stuff. I actually launched my podcast yesterday, and then I got to actually experience the content room, and I got to film some episodes for my podcast. I have been able to network from the moment I got off my plane. Thank you guys so much for the podcast summit. This has been an amazing experience, and this is just day one. Who believes they have a seven-figure podcast inside of them? It sounds good. It sounds real good. Get pen and paper out, let's get to work. Me and my partner Donnie made an offer more on the entrepreneurial side where you can have us as business partners. David gets really nervous about like asking for the money. He gets excited about the product. He wants to do it all the time. Oh yeah, 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 we're gonna do this, do this, do this. But when it's time to ask for the money, he gets scared and it's all on me. <laughs> What's up, it's Rashad, one half of Iron Leisure. I'm at the podcast summit right now. My boy David Shans put it together. And um, you know, it's very important that we have this kind of dialogue because there's no blueprint, there's no college course to actually learn how to, you know, be a superstar in a new age in media. So these type of formats, these type of programs are extremely important. Now, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been wanting to create. I've yeah, always yeah. wanted to be on. But it's the, it's the consistency part yep. when shit ain't working, it's yep. stuck. Yeah, yeah. So we, well, that's what, well, here go the thing. You don't know if it's not working. That's the problem. So like I said, when we was doing Thank God It's Monday, we had 50 people watching. Was it working or not? I don't, it was, we just didn't see the evidence till later. Okay. What's faith? The, the, the substance? The things hope for and the evidence things. So if you got faith that it's gonna work, as long as you know, listen, I say this, if you can get five people to listen, you can get 10. If you can get 10, you can get 50. If you can get 50, you can get 200. You see what I'm saying? Like, if, if you got people right, and so a lot of people get caught up because they don't got the big numbers and they ain't got the huge following. Right. Keep, stay consistent with the content. Well, a lot to say on, on the 
on the side. But, but yeah, like you said, we don't want to box her. In. I mean, we can have them placed and then just quickly from like here, right here. After they sit, that worked. That worked so good. We are yeah, um, setting up back. the Just set the, for the Babis. Um, she up. is interviewing a surprise celebrity guest. Well, Rick Ross isn't yeah. coming anymore. He was supposed to be Trina's guest. So now we're trying to find another celebrity that's in Miami that'll come and interview. I am about to interview Trina. This was not originally a part of the program. There are some things that I'm gonna ask her about stuff that I don't know about. The woes of uh, doing something good. And we were running on time, the whole time. So there's one issue. I guess I don't need to talk about that too much, but I mean, it's a part of the journey. Right? If I'm being honest, man, the highlight of the conference for me was the testimonials. I mean, you, do, you put all this time and energy into an event, you're like, yo, did everybody have a good time? Was everyone pleased or are they gonna cancel me Monday morning? And the testimonials, the, the tears, the rave reviews, and it wasn't me, it was the fact that they got a, a gumbo of information that was tailored towards them. So the biggest thing I got yesterday was learning how to reach out to sponsors, getting the correct pitch deck going, and also when it comes to branding and making sure that whenever you're pushing yourself on YouTube that you have a good thumbnail and a good description. One thing that I learned that I'm going to implement immediately is one, make sure all my operations are in order, two, thinking about branding, specifically what Mario talked about of like, what brands can you actually work with and what does that look like to actually get sponsorship. The podcast summit in two days transformed my life and it just opened my mind as to how far I can go with my podcast, any pivots that I may need to make or any rebranding that I need to make. So we're just going bigger. We're just going bigger. We're just going bigger.